Hello, welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week, presented to you by Me Undies. You've heard me talk about Me Undies, and you know I'm a big believer in their product. They're the perfect balance of comfortable fit, and every month they have new and exciting prints, and they arrive at your door in a fun bag. Me Undies uses lensing micromodal in their underwear. It's a, sustain- it's a sustainably sourced, naturally soft fiber. Starts with beechwood trees and ends with the most amazing fabric you've ever experienced. 100% satisfaction guarantee. MeUndies guarantees you'll love their undies or your money back. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, when you purchase any MeUndies, you get 20% off and free shipping. MeUndies is so sure you'll love their underwear. They offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you don't love your first pair, you get a full refund. It's a no-brainer. Get 20% off a pair of the most comfortable undies you'll ever put on. So to get your 20% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. That's MeUndies.com slash Rooster Teeth. Big thank you to MeUndies for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast. Guess what? It's time to make some steaks. I got some steaks on the grill right now. Let's go look at them. Hey, it's hey. time for steaks. Steaks. Is this the second annual? Even though we had it like Sec- four years Second ago? ever. It was two years ago. So was it two or three? Two. So it's 2016, we had steaks. Yeah. And then what were we doing last year? We just forgot. Uh, I was still listening to you bitch about your stomach. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, we, so we tried to do something different this year, but you fuckers didn't let us. Well, well because you sent us an email saying that we should cook the steaks? Yeah. I, were you just being lazy? No, it was a good idea. It's a good idea. What? You How two should make the steaks. It's not like I asked you yesterday. I asked you like a week in advance. Two people that way you could practice. make steak. But the whole point is, who, wait, who won the last steak off? Bernie. Bernie. Right, so this is your That's chance right. to come back. Yeah, Gus. <laughs> last time? Bernie. 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 It wasn't because of a shitty scoring system. It was legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you say, Trump. So there's no scoring <laughs> system this year. There's no scoring it's system. It's just like who likes the but steak the best. there are three judges this year. There are three judges. We have a... Uh, so it can't be a tie. So it's you two, and who's our other judge? Patrick. 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 Salazar. That's Patrick. So I should explain, uh, last year, one oh. of these... Two fellas, years ago. Two years ago. One of them made me vomit and violently shit myself. Are, you sh- are we sure it was the steak? Meat. Well, I don't know. I, that was, you have I a don't poor know. constitution. What else did I eat? I, I, wa- I, I probably washed my hands 30 times. Wait, is that yeah, why we have we've a medic this here? Hands constantly all day today. Yeah. We have a medic for food poisoning. We do have a medic. <laughs> He's also here because of the fire and the knives. You know, oh, we, have, oh. we have a few dangerous that's things hot, going that's on. Sharp. This is hot. I had to warn everyone when I turned it on. I was like, the grill is on. Do Should not come over here. Are we for a- our judges, <laughs> warm nuts <laughs> to begin your day. It's like you first are. class. There you are. There you are. Warm I feel nuts. like I'm on, on, a, on a plane. Patrick, our new, our new judge. Oh, oh wow. Get a hand in there. Warm Wonderful. nuts for everybody. Enjoy, Patrick. Mm. Your warm nuts feel Audience good in my mouth. have a nut. <laughs> this is great for the audio listeners. You Brilliant. like the sound of it? It's like ASMR. Do you I want like... to hear me chew? I'm putting the pecan in my mouth. These are fantastic warm nuts. Thank All you. of our special oh occasions goodness. are based around eating food that the audience can't really even enjoy. We live in Austin. Also, yeah. this is totally better than what you'd ever get on first class, right? But they give you all the shitty nuts. Yeah, it's more than peanuts. I gave you uh, pecans as well in there. Made made a little Texas flavor. Or some people say pecans. Or some people say pecans. Pecans. We call those people scumbags. (laughs) (laughs) Mm. Gus, where's your appetizer? Uh, I don't have an appetizer. But you do have. I'm gonna save it. I have a secret weapon. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to reveal it yet. Both both parties have done in order to swing our favor. What are you asking? Well, the, the focus, neither of you, is the focus entirely on the meat. So no. what are, are you doing anything different this year? What are you doing? I am. I'm doing a couple of different things. Um, first of all, I was, since we're doing this in the shadow of St. Patrick's Day this year, Oh yeah. I thought I would pair it with some roasted new potatoes with rosemary. Delicious. They smell wonderful. You smell that right now? It smells so good. And then uh, because Gavin, you tweeted today uh, that you were looking for a place to have a full English breakfast. Yeah. That's so I thought he's got that, he wants that taste. We flew in the queen. <laughs> can't, can't do tomatoes with steak, so I did mushrooms with steak. So you'd have oh. some mushrooms today. Right. So, so I'm turning his Britishness my... against you guys. That's interesting. It's interesting. So yeah. you have sides and appetizer. Yes. And you have another secret ingredient. I have meat and a secret ingredient that I'm waiting to reveal until the final presentation. He's, he's a purist. Yeah. I'm going to go get my steaks. I'm sous vide them inside and I'll be right back. So I decided, I did something a little different. Last year, remember, I did that Korean marinade where I marinated it like in a, almost like a, um, like a soy glaze. So this year I went ahead and did something totally different. I decided I wanted to do something peppercorn based, so I did. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, I did. I love peppercorn. Hey guys, can uh, I just do a favor? A brown mustard rub uh, all over the steak, and then sharp. covered it off with peppercorn. But I was grinding I mean, the peppercorns in the kitchen, and, and Barbara walked by. She goes, <laughs> What is that? That smells delicious. Like, pepper. 
It's just, it's just black pepper. I felt like such a fucking Seasoning. idiot. <laughs> right, but I did. I had a giant plate of it because yeah, I needed a ton a for all the steaks. Plate, and I was like sitting at the table and I was like, oh my, well, that smells great. What is that, Gus? And he goes, pepper. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> Carrying knives. I'm so dumb. Like, I guess I just haven't smelled so, pepper I, yeah, in that quantity and before. I, I did put a little bit of heat in with the mustard as well. It's got like a little bit of Tabasco Ooh. to just add like a little bit of uh, spiciness. It sounds like you really know what you're doing this year. Uh, I knew what I was doing last year. I thought last year was more complicated. This year was easy compared uh, to that. Honey, I think is going for the same kind of sous vide. It's sort of super the... complicated. I have done. You can just set them right there. I just please. like Thanks. watching Bernie's table versus Gus's table, which is just a grill. I had to expand. I'm a purist. Even mm -hmm. though I've had to expand to a different table. Even though this year is entirely based on the taste of the steaks, I will say that Bernie wins the award for best dressed Thank chef. You. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Today, um, in, um, in, if I'm giving that award, well, I mean, you can feel free to give out other awards. I mean, I just had this hat. I'm okay with the purist look too. Yeah. Just the apron. Yeah. Just Gus being Gus. It's like a dad got, at the weekend. Steaks, yeah. What's up, kids? <laughs> <laughs> Put your leg up. Could you all some kids. steaks? It would be great if you had like kiss the cook or something. Yeah. Or in Gus's case, do not touch the right, cook. Great. Or like kiss so, me, I'm horny. Just be careful, don't touch it. <laughs> so, are we allowed to ask what the ball pit is for yet? We don't know. Bernie's mad about it. That's all I know. What is the ball pit? Uh, Marcus did that. I don't know. He was really excited about having a ball pit. Can we get in. Is there? If you don't like your steak, well, well, you can claim up to five minutes in the ball pit as a compensation. So the thing about sous vide steaks is they look super gross when you're done cooking them, but not before you sear them. When you're basically when you're done cooking them, they actually like these steaks are fully cooked right now, but they look <laughs> gross because they look boiled. Right. Trying to step on my John Thomas. Oh God, this is gonna end horribly. We got a medic. Don't Medic's right there. Yeah, he's close. We're both in. See? Oh, oh, oh. oh God! Right in the shin. <laughs> in the shin. <laughs> Sorry. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, some of these steaks over here. Oh. So for Barbara. Oh. That's me. I have Patrick. Did you take these knives to be sharpened? Or they come out just brand new knives? Brand new. Yeah. So for Barbara. That's me. I have a prime cut filet mignon because she requested that. That's my favorite. Is it also because it's uh, it's French? A filet mignon. Filet mignon. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But do you say fillet? No, for filet. this in, uh, in the UK? Uh, yeah. Or, okay. yeah. I mean, f filet, filet mignon is still that, but a fillet steak is, you just put an extra L in it. Okay, so we're gonna start. Do you? I never noticed grilling that. Grilling yeah. this one for barb, or searing it, I should say, not grilling it. Got a nice sizzle there. Needs to come up higher. How many yeah, ounces a is a more. filet mignon? It's always. It's normally between six and eight is what yeah, I typically see. Eight. So what kind of state is this meat in? Is it, it's like it's mainly cooked, and now you just need to so this is sear cooked. it. And now I'm searing it for, mainly for presentation. More so than anything you else. You kind of eat like that if you want it. You could eat it right now. It just I, looks a bit. It looks a bit sort of. It looks boiled. Mingy. It looks boiled. Yeah. yeah. Mingy. How dare you? Listen, this is not part of the competition. I was just trying. <laughs> Bernie <laughs> brought knives into the kitchen. He goes, "These are the sharpest knives you will ever see." I, I think what he said was he thinks he could cut his car with them. Well, let's I, what test I did it was, out. What I did was I took my knives, not these knives, the knives over there, is Anna Hullum, watch out, guess, gave me this knife one year. And so I took it over to uh, the stage two machine shop and they, they razor sharpened it for me today. So <laughs> that's what I'll be using to cut. Try sticks. shaving with it. I probably I'm could. Check on my steaks over here. So Gus, do you feel you were at a slight disadvantage having to leave your steaks unattended while you did the ad read? Um, it was, I was a little worried about it, uh, but I think uh, hopefully they turned out okay. It doesn't seem like anything bad Here's happened. Here's what I think. I think the major disadvantage is mine because I won last year and I think everyone still feels sorry for Gus. So I feel like I had to really step my game you also have You also have to defend the title. You got the I most do. to lose. I got nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. I'm coming in with like a blank palette. Like slate. Yeah, you say that. Yeah. But I don't believe I'm it. Pretending that the other year never happened. Oh, this thing's about to fall apart. I actually didn't remember who won. I didn't either. <laughs> well. Oh, scoring, we believe me, we did. The scoring system was a little garbage. It was pretty close. Point? I feel like it might have even been hot. It was one point. It was, was one, one point. point. It was like we rated everything out of five, I think. Mm -hmm. So was it awful? Mm -hmm. Did we come up with a bat? No, it system? was. Now we have Patrick, so we have three judges. You, Barbara, you preferred my steak. Gavin, you preferred Gus's food poisoning steak, but <laughs> because of the scoring system, Barbara rated mine higher. You both rated them. Yeah, like I think it was three things out of five. Right. Yeah. Presentation. Guess, yeah. Presentation. Taste. Moistness. I think moistness was one of them. Yes. I'm gonna get a mad farmer's tan out Moistitude. here. Moistitude. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just do what I'm doing. Just just try to stay in the shade over sleeves. here. I'm so right, well, going to start searing mine now. Okay? Go for it. Yeah, I'm about. Eh. Between five and ten minutes out, depending on some stuff. That's better. good lord. Did you see the jiggle on that meat? That, that was incredible. Yeah, these are. I'm just gonna get in so here for, uh, for sniffs. 
Bernie did something I intentionally did not do. What's I thought that? that getting Wagyu beef would be uh, cheating, so I did not get the Wagyu, and he did get the Wagyu. Pay to win, buddy. But you know, he's always going to take the cheeky path. Yeah, I should I should have been thinking ahead. Okay, that smells real good. All right, Let me get a whiff of your steak. Ah, it's like the best smelling day. It's, it's overpowering over here. Chomp, 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 chomp. So basically what we do is we sous vide. Ooh, that's good too. Get the internal temperature of the steak up to 128, 130 degrees, if you want to do it medium rare, and then sear it for two minutes aside. Okay. That's it. So not Easy. only is this a steak up, it's also a lesson for anyone at home who it's wants to It's a lesson for anyone who it's wants a, to It's also it. a lesson for people with microphones here. Why? Just what? throwing that out there. What I happened? have a microphone. Y'all are y'all are stepping up next year. Oh, oh I'm, I'm learning all the time. Oh, I see. I'll just pull out my one of these that I obviously have. Here, guess what? I mean, Gavin, why don't you sous vide next year? Oh, I'll grill. <laughs> Grill's easy. <laughs> I'll grill. Yeah, they're over here. We have paper plates? You got Trinette, cool. baby. You cool. know what I would do? Cool. I would nope. do steamed hams. Steamed hams. No complaints? Yeah. <laughs> you should absolutely do that. Oh, I'll make something you. really British. Oh, you should. Toad in the old. Now. Toad in the old. I did not ask. The old what? But I'm assuming everyone here likes a rare steak. I like, yeah, rare to medium rare. You uh, you were upset about the juiciness of it last year, Barbara. I was. I believe so. You was said it was it too juicy two years ago. I don't wow. know if that's possible. I feel like they've been watching the video. Yeah, you uh, said my steak was too juicy, and I lost points for it. Really? Yes. Yeah, his was marinated though. His was like Ooh. sloppy mess. You want juice? You want juice? I want me. juice, but I don't want sloppy juice. <laughs> I put that on my Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that sloppy juice. <laughs> but I spelled it juice. Yeah, are you saying juice or juice? <laughs> I like my sloppy juice. Have you been eating today or have you been? No, I only had breakfast. Yeah, I had a I... very light lunch in preparation. Oh, today. I nice. saw Gavin about to eat. Look at that bang. <laughs> Gavin was What's about that? to eat some. Uh... Here. Look at this. He was oh, about yeah, to eat a snack cool. today. I was about to eat some mini muffins. And, and I you... said, you're going to spoil your appetite for the steak, Gavin. Like them, right? Barbara, your fillet's got the best one yet. Oh. Oh, we're getting a applause. Golf clap from off camera. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know if the audience at home could smell that. Thank you. Just go right, really up close to your screen. And this is about wind. the time last year when everything caught on fire, if I recall correctly. Oh yeah. Two years ago. Oh, you mean that, that tank good. is right next to the open flame, like that? <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, we had a uh, used butter for the yeah. searing part, and that was a bad idea. Oh, yeah. Don't worry. Just put the intern between the, the tank and the butter. <laughs> All right, guys, a minute 30, and I'm going to be off. All right, I got about about the same here. I'm excited. I'm so excited. I'm mine's so so hungry right now. The, the hardest part for me is Gavin, cooking with this grill I don't know. Wash my hands? Go wash your hands. Yeah, we don't want you to be the end. I'm going to go wash my hands. Put that oh. down. Look at that one. Look at him going into. Oh, okay. All right, you go in there. He's going to go be fancy in there. You know what's really funny? I woke up this morning after having, I had a pizza last night that had chicken on it. Mm -hmm. And the chicken kind of tasted off on it. And then my stomach was like gurgling all night. And I had a moment where I was like, if I get food poisoning <laughs> the night before the steak off, that would be super ironic. Especially if you got sick and you weren't able to come in. Yeah. Had to have a replacement. I actually was panicking about it. I was like, I can't miss today. It's uh -oh. my favorite day of the year. A little bit of fire there. That's unfortunate. Let's move that. Mm -mm -mm. Those are big steaks. Yeah. Yeah, Gus does specialize in very thick steaks. I like a good ju juicy steak. So it takes a little longer to cook. You got to keep it over a lower heat uh, just to uh, Oop, that steak's make about sure to you don't burn apart. the outside and leave the inside rare. Do you have a meat thermometer with you? I do not. I do. Bernie does. I, listen, I'm prepared this year to take all precautions. How many steaks do you think you've cooked between this steak and the last steak off? Uh, dozens. Dozens, Gus? Oh, easily. Oh, uh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Dozens. Oh, man. So based off that information, these steaks should both be bad. Also, who the fuck chose these utensils? This is not going to... Oh, I, gonna... I got steak knives for you guys. Okay. They're right here. I was going to say, this is not going to cut. It's not going to cut it. It's not going to cut I a gut steak. steak knife sharpened as well. That's a little trick because then it makes your meat seem like it's even tender. Tenderer. 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 That one looks really good. I'm jealous of yours. You can have a bite of mine. Yeah. Do you want? You guys are going to have two full steaks. Listen. So. Well, it's a different cut. Oh, Barbara, come here and look at this. Look at this. It just wants to fall apart right there. It's like, bleh. Oh, my God. That looks so good. It's real good. All right. There's Barbara's. We are done oh. over here. Are we going to have Nicholas, an no fires? You'd be so happy to know. Yeah. I'd be interested to see what the audience think based on just the looks of them. Yeah. And mm. Which ones they prefer. We should probably put a poll up. 
maybe. So this is Wagyu, and it, it seared really intensely on that one. So I'm really looking forward to that. It'll be good. Oh my god. So again, this just to recap, this is the uh, mm -hmm. brown mustard Tabasco rub with uh, crushed black peppercorns. Oh boy. Get out of here, fly. And then once uh, we're ready to eat, I will I will present my surprise secret weapon. <laughs> what is it? How should, we, should we also uh, right, so check you, the temperature I'll give you this plate and I get this chinette? It's Shit. right there. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for like the impartiality to rear its ugly head. Should we clear some room on this table? What's great is that this event doesn't happen very often, but it is very competitive. Just as competitive as last time. It is highly, highly, highly competitive. I think it's even more competitive because, because there was a winner last year. Yeah, there's titles to keep, there's yeah. titles to beat. So, uh, would anyone like me to slice their steak for them? Uh, sure. Can you slice it and put it in my mouth? <laughs> Could you feed me? That I cannot do. Does anybody need this lighter, by the way? It's right there. Now, normally, for the ribeye... Oh, the way the knife is just gliding it just through It zips right through it. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, I'm happy. <laughs> so you got your nerves out of the way. I don't know on mine yet. Yeah. You're not allowed to cut it yet? I'm not. Uh, I let, I let the, the diner cut it. Oh, okay. okay. I gotta... yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually going to like just put mine in plates. These are way b bigger than the okay. plates. <laughs> <laughs> it's also different. Like when you sous vide, it's different versus the grill preparation. Like it I'm is. trying to preserve the, the juice. Oh, uh, yeah. And you, and it changes. You, how long do you recommend for letting your steaks so rest? Normally, I rest about five minutes after I come off the grill. So that's kind of why I was ready to plate them and leave them over here while we finish up over here. Because they cook a little bit more, right? Mm -hmm. you take them off. Yeah, you want to let the, the juices settle a bit. Oh, boy. It kind of it just uh, basically contracts and everything comes back up in. Oh, I love steak juices. But not sloppy. But not too sloppy. Not sloppy juice. So here, pre-prepared, I have some rosemary potatoes. I Anybody saw... not want potatoes? It's a silence on the no okay. potatoes. Everyone wants potatoes. Ooh. Now, I've, because we, uh, I decided to pair this with potatoes because we're so close to St. Patrick's Day, and I thought that would be a good thing to do. <clears throat> Gus was smart and I think is thinking along the same lines. And then right after this, I read a tweet from Gavin this morning uh, that he wanted a full English breakfast and wanted to know somewhere in Austin where he could get that. So that inspired me to include mushrooms as well, because that's part of the full English breakfast, and I figured Gavin's palate, he was ready for some mushrooms. Some lovely shrooms. So what I'm hearing is you value my vote. I value your vote, Gavin. I actually, All votes are important, but I value your vote. I actually did go up to Bernie earlier, to be fair to him, and I said that I was accepting bribes. He wanted me just to vote for him in advance, just for some little, little bit of cash, but he wasn't having it. So Patrick, he Barbara, thinks he mushrooms can win me as well? Mushrooms. Yes, please, yeah, mushrooms. Please. Okay. The sun is making my eyes tear, and it's smudging my makeup. Mm. It's because I'm actually crying because I'm so excited for yeah, steak. Yeah, you're crying for steak. I don't blame you. Yeah. It's the meat sweats. They're this. already happening. Out of your eyes. Out of my eyes. <laughs> my eyes are crying for meat. So I'm just going to pair these along with it and not put it on top of the steak. I saw I a dog walking through the parking it. lot a second ago, and I was like, uh-oh. All right, I'm ready to serve, Gus, if you are. I'm ready. So should I mean, we I've already be, served should one we should we take appetizer our course of hot take, nuts. Take your seat. Not to brag or anything like that. All right, I'm just gonna, mm, oh, wonderful. Oh. Not the best plating in the world. Let's present. So, shall I put this one down now? This mic? Oh boy. Oh yeah. Barbara? Yes. And the place is here. Oh boy. So the oh, thanks, man. The final step, my secret weapon, is I have a beer pairing Ooh. as well. A beer pairing? Nice. A little blue owl uh, sour pale ale, which I think should pair well. That's actually why I've not been on the beer just yet. Ooh. And Patrick, and I would recommend uh, starting here. Okay. That's the most flavorful part of the steak. Okay. Uh, Gavin, yeah, you want to start right here on this part here. Okay. Uh, that's the most uh, flavorful part of the steak, and I don't think you're going to be able to get through all of this. You don't think they'll be able to eat both steaks? I don't think. <laughs> since Gus has a, since Gus has a pairing, should we do that second so it doesn't affect Bernie's right. steak? Charlie, I will. Yeah, I will. Let me, let me I will take some collateral shrapnel damage from the. Uh, <laughs> Pairing as well. Hey, what do you think? It, it, it's really good. Yeah, good, right? Steak knife, Bernie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For cutting? I'm going to try this mushroom, too. I'm going to try a potato. All right. Those oh, potatoes are awesome. Mm hmm. Enjoy so the mushrooms. Mm hmm. Well, that's the inside. Um, potatoes are cooked all the way through. Well. See that? If this was go. a competition for mushrooms, there you go. And potatoes. Thank you. You'd be yeah. winning. So careful, it's very sharp. 
Oh, so, dude. Mm, I'm just going to leave this here. Uh, no rush whenever you guys are ready. <laughs> um, just go ahead and uh, you can, you can take care of that. Oh my god, look at that. Mm. Get your eyes on Amazing. That. Oh my gosh, looks like butter. Nicholas, potato, Mike, I want this part sounds really good. <laughs> <laughs> that part sounded really good. There will be meat left too, I'm sure. Mm. Holy shit. Wow. All right, walk us mm. through it. What's going on? Where's your head at? Very juicy, very tender. It's literally like butter. I'm eating the part that you recommended. It's like slicing through fog, almost. Mm -hmm. Barely feel it. <laughs> Why do you prefer the filet mignon to like a ribeye, Barbara? Yeah. I don't know. I, I've always just thought they were easier to, like, it seems like there's more meat to it. You don't mm. have to cut around a whole bunch of stuff. You just kind of eat That is true. Ribeye, yeah. you're, no, you're not going to eat yeah. a lot And of I it. like how it's thick this way instead of just Go ahead. like that mm -hmm. So it's uh, girth is important, <laughs> is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I've got a complete bite here. I just had the steak on its own last time, so. Oh, look, look at that. The flavors. Get the, the full English. Mm. Mm. Full on, full All English. Right. That wouldn't go too deep. What it's to be for a competition? No, no. So I wouldn't go too deep into one before Plus, trying uh, the other. Yeah, I'm gonna eat some of that too. Okay. So. <laughs> Gus, would you like to try some of Bernie's? No, no, I'll wait. Okay. Gotta... Would you like to try some of the fillet? Mm. Just listen. Like, if you're gonna try you one, some fillet. Yeah, I'll try it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, you told me. <laughs> Gus, which um, yeah. area? Would Someone you I like, dragged to the parking like lot. To think, uh, I'm, I'm a purist. I leave that up to the diner. Mm. Uh, I think here on this particular cut, you would want to attack from here. Where are we going? He, he leaves it up to the diner, but guess what? You don't get to pick your own drink. So. <laughs> <laughs> At All least right, I provided a drink. Hey, how, how are your drinks, Bernie? Uh, <laughs> I made them very thirsty with the nuts. That actually is what it gets me. May I have one of the beers, Gus? Yeah, go for it, man. Cheers. Those are really good. Cheers, chat. Cheers. I'm going to just save that oh. until after I've had the meat. That's a really good beer, Gus. Mm -hmm. Let me see this. Mm. Points on the beer. It's nice. It's a sour beer, so right. it should pair well with the uh, mustard. You, Any gonna... particular? Uh, I mean, it's really it's wow. up to you. This one is there. This one, I would go Whoa. from here. Here. I can say I've never had a beer like that. Yeah, it's good. This one is, is, appears to be rarer. I'm gonna just take a bite. Definitive down. choice, Gus. This is a sour pale ale. Yeah. Very, very floppy and tender. Oh, that looks good. Not mm. as sloppy juicy this year. <laughs> oh, you definitely mm. taste the pepper. I do mm. like the pepper. Mm hmm. I didn't want it to be overwhelming, that's why I figured the beer would go well with it. The mustard's nice, it comes through just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there should hopefully be a little bit of heat. There's a very little Tabasco. I wasn't sure if anybody mm. would react violently to like spicy food, so I didn't go overboard with it. Yeah, but there's a, it in the back of my throat. There's a little bit. So Gus, what is your process? Uh, it's really simple. I just rub it with uh, some spicy brown mustard, some Tabasco uh, mixture, so that it um, the, pep the black peppercorns can adhere to it afterwards. So after I put the, the mustard on it, I just dredge it through a bowl of crushed black pepper, freshly crushed black pepper. Corn. I saw you making that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had like this mountain of crushed pepper that he was making. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Wow. I always heard a story about a, a comedian. I forget who told, I think Colin Quinn told the story, but there's some comedian he's known for, if you go to a restaurant with him and they ask for cracked pepper, he will not let the waiter stop. Oh like, God, they'll do the whole like, thing? Like, just, no, just keep that's, going, just keep going. That's why yeah. I had to stop, my hand started hurting after grinding for a bit, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can't. I feel like we should give people who are in the audience some. You guys want some? I'm gonna cut some pieces. Are you guys done with your uh, judging amounts? I, mean, I think so. I'm gonna have to go back to this one, just to. Uh, just I gotta get some gristle. Comparison. I love gristle. Ribeye's good for that. Oh man, look at that. Are you? Are you gonna get any steak? Love. Yeah, sure. I'll have some. I wanna try some Augustus. You wanna try some Augustus? We got a, I got a, got a, got a fork over here. Hey, Wes, this is very good. Ducking out. What cook were you going for? Uh, I was going for a medium rare. Okay. <laughs> oh, how's it look? Is it about medium rare? Looks like it. You know that, that shot in the Matrix where... Yeah, good. Yeah, the steak. A little more blue there. Yeah. A little bit, but it's good. Going back in, and then he's just like... It's like that kind of thing. There. Here, there. Grab on for each. Grab some potato, too. There's some potato. Thank you. Here. This is Bernie's a little oven from my bus. It, uh, it uh, uh, knocked those potatoes out, out, dude. Anyone else? Tell me off a little bit of that, if you don't mind. I don't know if I could pick a winner between these. This is very hot. Honest. And I gotta say that the pairings, a little bit. The, the pairings are phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, let me have more of this beer. Thank you. Are you eating my Which sides one? with Gus's steak? Uh, That's a bold move. Uh, Bernie's is a Gus's. I'm putting you uh, with meat here. Oh, I gotcha. Well, I just tried both. They're very different preparations. Yep. It's really interesting to contrast them. West Pass. Yeah. 
Which one do you want? Go. Meryl, get in there. Oh, hell yeah, Meryl. Get some. Uh, I made one of these. I don't know. Fork. There's, a, there's some forks right there, but I made one of these, but I'm not sure if I could pick a winner. They're very different. Mm -hmm. They're very radically different. different. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Uh, either one. Either one? Well, my mine is pretty similar to the this one last so year. Mm -hmm. I've just refined my. That's Bernie. That's Bernie's. That's Gus's. Well, the only losers here today are the cows. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> They're being celebrated, though. Got to compliment the beer pairing, Gus. Yeah. Works very well. Good side. That, I've never had a beer like this. It is Bernie a sour Gus. pale ale. This one has a beer pairing if you want to sip the beer as well. I can get you. I can get you. And you can too if you want one, Mariel. No, I'm good. All right. I don't think I could decide. I'll be yeah, like. All right. Thank you, boys. <laughs> oh, what are your Mariel, thoughts? Mariel, hit and run. Give me a signal. Help me. <laughs> My <laughs> goddess. I'll look away. So, are we gonna? We all just gonna say our votes, or are we gonna discuss mm. our votes? I think they should discuss it, and then you and I can go podcast. All right. And they will come and announce the winner to us. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to toss this. People, don't spoil it on Twitter. I'm not going to check Twitter while we're in there then. Okay. I'm, I am going to grab one of my beers. So, so is, gonna... is the feed on us while we discuss, or is it on them chatting? Uh, oh, it's probably on us, right? That'll be on you guys. Yeah. Okay, cool. So say, when we carry the show so the with me, could watch it <laughs> <until they laughs> rip it out of my hands. <laughs> All right. Guys, excellent job. Thank you. Thank Very you. Well. So good. Just Everything need, is so good. need more of both. I like how they're like, you won't be able to finish it. It's like, I anyone else? Think I could mm. Anybody get some of the dim? Which one do you want? Uh, that was lovely. Christian, you want me to feed you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut to meat. Open up. So, again, I'm already making excuses. I don't like cooking on a grill. I don't know. I need, I next, next time we do this, I'm going to bring my own grill in. Yeah, I feel you. It's like there's uneven spots. Like, I tried to go for a medium rare cook, and Gavin's was definitely under. And uh, by the time Patrick got to the middle on his, it was a little more rare than I would have liked. Yeah, but I thought your color was actually better than my color. The color looked good, but it was just, I was, it was aiming for a little what more of a cook on it. What is this? He's walking to a table that's off camera. There's pizza. He's bringing a pizza. They got pizza? Yeah. They get, look at this. There's not enough steak for everyone. That's, no, there is. It's a lot of meat, dude. There's a lot of meat, but there's a lot of people out there. They destroyed the pallets. Actually, nah. And actually, Patrick cooked everybody's steaks. Yeah, Patrick did cook pre-steak off steaks. All right, Mike, I'm going to make your life easier. I'm about to get a mic. Yeah, Lop. You're good. Um, where we at? I was about to see if I could do an ad read, but don't need to. I already did it. All done. So I was asking a question the other day, Gus. What's up? If Fortnite had come out last year, right, because it was in development for seven years. So if Fortnite had come out last year, would people still be playing it today? I think it would It would have... It would have passed over. It would have been a non-event. Like, it would have launched. People would have talked about it for a and bit, then it would have disappeared. Yep. I think their, re their success really has come from this pivot to the Battlegrounds uh, game format. To the Battle Royale genre. Battle Royale. Genre. Uh, and, yeah, and PUBG Mobile just launched today. We were, you saw me messing around with it a little earlier when we were prepping our steaks. You know, actually, there's two podcasts going on at once right now. Hmm. So I don't even know if we're on or Yeah, not. we're on. It's us. Because you know we're, we're hiding the, the results out okay. there. So I, I think I know why I'm so sensitive about the PUBG thing and Fortnite thing is because when we started making Red versus Blue, it it wasn't an overnight success, but it basically was like falling up a cliff. The, the first episode had 3,000 views, and then we had a million views mm -hmm. a week by the end, of the end of the month. And then we were informed that we were part of this genre called machinima. And then there was, a, there was how many? Like a thousand There's other so machinimas many. in the next Blue few years? Blue versus Red. Yeah. And it, was, it was all color versus color. Yeah, and they all looked... They all looked kind of the same because they used the Halo, Halo engine. Yeah. So there was all this brand confusion. And then, of course, then the big M machinima started as a company. That made it even worse. So I guess that's where that sensitivity yeah, comes from that. for me. I mean, like, I'm kind of the same way. That's why I'm like a PUBG loyalist. Like, I haven't even tried Fortnite, for, <laughs> Fortnite <laughs> Battle Royale. I say, no, 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 fuck that. I'm just playing PUBG. Yeah, but uh, play that Fortnite. I played, uh, played a bunch of PUBG over the weekend. Well, yeah. and I, I recognize, too, that there were other games like The Culling. There were some other Battle Royale games. People had tried it. But kind of like there was other Machinima stuff that was out, you know? Yeah. But it wasn't like it was it wasn't like a thing thing until there was something popular to then genre eyes mm -hmm. and turn into everything else. Yeah, it was not a genre until PUBG came out. I, and now it's like the Battle Royale genre. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, we Even used though, to play a game on Halo 2. I used to, I used to talk to Gav about it. We used to play a game where um, we would play on Lockout. Is that Halo 2? Yeah. yeah, and we would start with random weapons, and you only had one life. Mm. So then, when you killed somebody, 
if you had the needler, you could pick up their rocket launcher. Right, right. So it's interesting. We always like that kind of gameplay. Did you see uh, last year at E3? I saw a game I was really interested in, and they just announced a release date for it today. It's coming out next month. It's a game for the PS4. It's called Minute. It's an RPG where your lifespan is 60 seconds. So you go and you explore the world for 60 seconds, then you die. Then with the knowledge you learned in that 60 seconds, you respawn and play another 60 seconds. Oh, that's cool. So it's like you're just replaying this life over and over 60 seconds at a time, huh. trying to build up enough knowledge to explore the world and complete the game. That's interesting. It's a really interesting concept. I, I've heard, I played another game that I really enjoyed, but I didn't play it for very long. Um, it was a 60 second game, but the way it works is um, it's like kind of like that Fallout 1950s futuristic mm-hmm. style. Uh, and there's a nuclear alert that a missile's about to hit, so you have 60 seconds to mm. run through your house and get to the bomb shelter. I played that game. Yeah, and then you have, what's it called? It's like 60 seconds to live. Yeah, that's what it is. Something yeah, like something that. like that. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, I really liked it. But, uh, you, uh, you just played a game that I recommended, and that I really enjoyed. Um, 60 seconds is what it's called. Is that what it's called? Yeah. 60 seconds? And, uh, uh, the game that we played was a mobile game. Called Lifeline. God, Lifeline was so good. It's good, right? Yeah, it's uh, free. It's free, isn't it? No, or it's it... like a buck ninety nine. Yeah, think. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting way to approach a narrative. It's almost like choose your own adventure, but time based because you can't just plow through it, which helps the immersion factor of it. Right. So basically, have we talked? We haven't talked about it on the podcast, have we? No, I don't think so. So basically, you play as. A person who works, it's in the future where their space travel is very common to humans, but they haven't discovered aliens and things like that. And you play as a person who works in like mission control, and then an astronaut who is marooned on a planet starts getting in contact with you and is asking you for help. His name is Taylor. Yes. And then you will help Taylor. You basically make Taylor's choices for him, a lot right. of them, but they're pretty much in real time. So he says, hey, there's a crater and I'm gonna start walking towards it. And you say, I think that's a great idea, go for it. And he goes, okay, I'm gonna start walking, I'll message you in a while. And then he goes away for like five hours right. and then you get a message on your phone saying- When your phone does buzz again, you get really excited. It's <laughs> yeah, like, oh my God, he's true. back, what's gonna happen? Yeah. Or he goes to sleep and right. he's asleep for like 10, 12 hours. Is this a game you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's an iOS game called Lifeline. Is this the one that's a one minute long life? No, no, no. Oh. We started with that and that's how we ended up gotcha. with Lifeline. Yeah. So, how, uh, so you guys look like you just came in from outside. We did. Did. That was, was a intense debate. It was a, it was a long debate. <laughs> um, <laughs> I feel like honestly, both stakes were better than both stakes last time. Yeah, really. That's they, good to on, know. Honestly, both, like I was saying this outside, both stakes are better than most stakes I have at like fancy restaurants, mm-hmm. like including steak places. I was very impressed. High praise. Very high praise. High praise. High praise. Well, so you, I, listen, if you can learn to cook a steak, it's it's. It's great. It's because you can make it just the way you like it, and a, a steak restaurant will never quite Is do that. Is that you implying that we need to learn for next You year? should fucking learn how to make it. <laughs> the, most, the, most difficult part, specifically. the most difficult part, in my opinion, of cooking a steak or cooking a good steak is finding a good source of meat. Or finding like a good, like usually a cow cut of meat that, also, that you want to cook. Like, like yeah, a lot of times I'll go to the store and be like, these all look terrible. Oh, okay. I don't have a grill. Mm. So I don't know if that. Affects my ability to really cook a good. I steak. didn't use. I have a cast iron pan. Just use a fireplace. I don't have that either. <laughs> <laughs> cast iron pan, twenty bucks. Okay. And that the thing about a cast iron pan, people always talk about it in weird ways. Like people always say, "Oh, my cast iron pan is basically like a nonstick pan." I use it for. I said, that's not what it's for at no, all. No. It's mainly meant to get to really high heats and to retain that heat. So uh, if you basically use the sous vide thing, the sous vide cooker, you can get it for like seventy bucks. The one I have is like ninety nine bucks. Okay. Um. And then you're pretty much done. That ninety nine bucks, and then the thing. I mean, the steaks are twenty bucks each. We well, gotta so. put water in it. Well, you got the water too. <laughs> that expensive water. And the water. container. So, and you have to buy a lighter eventually, mm. not for the sous vide thing, right. but for. <laughs> but like the seasoning on mine is just a little, a little bit of garlic powder, salt, a lot of salt, yeah, and then uh, pepper. Do you salt the meat before you put anything else on to extract liquid, or like I don't understand? I've never done a sous vide. Like how does how does? It I, work? I I do the garlic first. I find that works better if I put the garlic powder down first, because mm-hmm. that kind of infuses a little bit, and then I put the salt on. It draws that it out. It starts that deterioration mm. of the muscle fibers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I I mean I got those steaks ready today, at like one o'clock. I saw you in the kitchen. Yeah, during yeah. like right after lunchtime. So already exciting. starting again. Yeah. So if if. There was a creature that ate humans and disgusting eating I know, human. right? I know. In the sort of blase <laughs> detail you're doing. What kind of rub did you use on it? <laughs> it. Break down the muscle fibers. No big. No big. Just give it a bit of a, just give it this kind of yeah. go, good old rub. It's, good, it's hard to find good quality <laughs> human. 
Yeah. 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 Also, the way we talk about the different cuts, it's like, oh, this is Kobe. It's like, oh, this is like Floridian. This is amazing. <laughs> so good. That was yeah. my lap. They spend all their time in the sun. <laughs> Glorious. So we were gonna. We had three judges because, in the case of a a tie, a tie mm-hmm. we could have decided. But I think I'm allowed to say that we all voted. It was unanimous for Ooh. the same state. Really. Mm-hmm. So shall I go ahead and present? You should present? Yeah, present. This Patrick, you're, you're on the hook for this too. Yeah, they got my vote. Okay. <laughs> the winner of the 2018 Rooster Teeth Steak Off. Oh, got <laughs> <roll. laughs> It's Bernie Burns. Oh wow! Thank you so much. Congratulations, Mr. It's Burns. It's so good to have this trophy back for another one to five years. <laughs> <laughs> For the people three launch. It. But I actually felt awful having to award it because they were both They phenomenal. were both really well, see, fucking it's, it's, good. It's like bittersweet, right? Like you say that the stakes are better yeah. than last year. So I was like, oh, that's good. But then I got no votes. It's like, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess they, it was Yours, unanimous. I would say, was rarer, juicier, um, and, the, and the pepper was phenomenal. The, yeah. the rub on yours was and phenomenal. With the beer was it the pairing? spiciness that, that took, it, took away from it? No, I don't think anything think... took away from it. I think yours was just so... It was like yeah. eating steak that was also butter. Like yeah. it was just... I, yeah, I, I, I bought a lot more expensive steak. <laughs> <laughs> that was helpful. And the way it was cooked, and yeah. The yeah, pairing was we, nice. We were talking about it when we came in. It's like, it's like, next time I do this, I'm definitely bringing my own grill. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's difficult to cook with a grill that you don't know, like, the how to yeah. get the heat just right or where the hot spots are. They were yeah. both so good. I was going back and forth. I was making sure I really had them picked. But I think, you know, the mushrooms and potatoes are also very good. Also very good. very good. A nice Harry. addition. Put a little, don't forget the, the warm nuts. The warm nuts. The, the warm nuts. Completely irrelevant to my <laughs> vote. They, def- they definitely whet our appetite. I will. Uh, I, I sometimes show up in Gavin's office and hand him a little thing of warm nuts. <laughs> I try to find you and I can never find you. Uh, so well, guys, we, I just want to say, I just want to say that this is not actually. This is a friendly competition. Absolutely. This doesn't really matter so much who wins. <laughs> you know, but it is important to recognize. See, there think- are no winners. There is just so, one winner. Do you think they'll replace your <laughs> Emmy nominated with two time steak off winner? Two-time steak I'm a two time the two time two time steak off Tesla owner. <laughs> well, so the first one honestly was that was bad scoring. <laughs> <laughs> that was just, yeah. Uh, so the reason we had the steak off today is we're gonna try to make it an annual thing where we normally have it around the first day of spring. So first day of spring is typically March twenty first. And it is our overall goal to have at least one food based special per quarter. Well, we we're, have we're working on that. We have the pancakes, the steak. What else are we do? we are going to do, do like, uh, Taco Tuesday Monday? Tacos or No, it was uh, <laughs> Sunday Monday. Sunday Monday. Sunday Monday. That's hard cuz ice cream melts real fast. Not when I'm around. <laughs> <laughs> There's no chance but for it to melt. Only the steak off is a competition, right? I think so. Yeah. Cuz otherwise it's uh, just uh, the other times you just make oh, stuff. Yeah, listen, we're not going to make ice cream. Is it really a competition, guys, or is it just us making steaks it's, for it's Gavin and Barbara? <laughs> it really is. We I don't know how you feeling good somehow. Managed to weasel our way into I this. was saying out there when we were deciding on the thing, I was like, I was, I was scoff- stuffing my fat face with steak, and I was like, and I said to Barbara, I was like, do you ever think you'd have Bernie and Gus from <laughs> versus Blue cooking you steaks? I know, like if we had to tell and, 15 year old us. And yeah. it's your job. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're not just hanging out. One day, years. you will be paid for Church and Simmons to make you steak. <laughs> that, that's mental. The, uh, the the email chain uh, that took place this weekend where Gus just said, hey, we really great idea of Gavin and Barbara, you made the steaks for me and Bernie. What was and my reply? Your reply was, I think that's a super shitty, shitty idea. That is <laughs> super shitty. dumb, <laughs> shitty, dumb idea. Yeah, I'm so happy that you responded that way. And so Barbara's I, I was, I'm 30 years old and have never made a steak in my life. I'm 28 you're, you're years old 30, and I've never made a steak for myself. Never made a steak. Never before. round up a woman. That's true. All right. I will never round up a woman. <laughs> Unless oh, it's for charity. Barbara's, yeah. uh, Barbara's, Barbara's exact reply was, I've never cooked a steak in my life, so unless you want to die, I suggest you and Bernie <laughs> still make the steaks, Gus. <laughs> what was mine? Yours was, I think that's a really shitty, super shitty idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I just wrote, fat cats. Fat cats. <laughs> we'll take care of it. So we actually had a plan in place. I'm dying. You had what in place? We had a plan in place. Oh, yeah? Which was that <laughs> we were going to sit there and have you guys watch us make the steaks. And then right as we went to serve them to you, throw them out. No, we're gonna bring in uh, Joel and Matt and Gu- and Jeff and just feed them instead. <laughs> but none of them would stay after fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, couldn't be done. Well, all I could say uh, that was a competition very well done. Are you okay? You're all like teary eyed and everything. Yeah, you good? Mm-hmm. So you got rounded up. Oh yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no, I started choking and I was laughing so hard that now I'm still choking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did when I was getting ready today. By the way. Hats off to the broadcast. Crew. Yeah, yeah awesome. you guys, you guys shot three different things today. Including they shot, this. Can we say what the first thing they shot? Yes. Here's in half wits. 
which always takes for fucking ever. Mm -hmm. Then they shot an episode of Always Open, oh, and then they got ready for this this like multi yeah. camera. Y'all even did because you were outside. But when I did the transition from in here to out there at the top of the show, they followed me with a really sweet jib shot. No shit. Yeah, go out there, about it, yeah. track, and then like flip back to the outside. Yeah, did you so guys get the rest. Where's the rest of the stage? Did you guys get it? Oh, they're out. I I gave I gave some to. They're gone. No, nice. I, I gave some to Jake to bring back to you guys. I think they ate it. Did you guys eat it? You guys had some. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. They're, they're good. Don't worry. So that was two complete set changes, and one had a, like a multiple part. Yeah. 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 That's just crazy. Very and then well I done. think what time did you guys start on Heroes and Halfwits? Early. Uh, like, like 8 a.m. or something? Uh, we were here at 8 a.m. Yeah, yeah crew saying we were here at 8 I was here at 9. <laughs> I was the first cast person here. Oh, yeah. And he doesn't count. He left. Fucking teacher's pet. Look at you. <laughs> you had a full day then. Cause you were here in the morning and I've then had a, I've had not as long as them, but uh, apparently, <laughs> when, uh, when we were getting ready, I was I was out there at like noon, getting some of the stuff ready to go, like getting the little oven out of my bus and everything, and then Jeff walked up and he actually said that this is not a legitimate competition because he is not invited, so he's officially invited to the oh, is there a game ne next with this year. Guess? Next year, absolutely. Is he, he going to do his oh. green egg? He can make all of us. Wait, does that mean we could have three steaks next year? <laughs> well. As should, long as you and Gavin learn to cook steaks, yeah. We, we should do a, a blind steak preparation next year where the judges don't know which steak. Oh, that's interesting. I agree with that. We, 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 we'll be just off for like Right, like the judges the are in here, preparation happens out there, then someone from broadcast brings the steaks in. Yeah. Very interesting. I do want to say that the two the two times that we've done this, I'm going to say the two years, but the, the two, two times. times that we've done this, Gus has also tried something novel as mm. well. Like you did the mustard this time, mm -hmm. and last time you did the Korean, the Korean -inspired marinade. One, yeah. Mine have both been very just straight up traditional steaks. So I'd be curious to see if like, you try it. Traditional... I like eating my steaks very traditionally. Normally it's just like salt and pepper and that's it. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like when you're when I'm doing something here on camera, like I want to do add something a little different, do something um, that stands out a little more. Well, I appreciate it because it's it gives us a little variety, and I can just like lean on this like traditional method B with potatoes. <laughs> which the potatoes are really well. Warm those potatoes were awesome. I'm also kind of upset now also, to know those that, mushrooms. that little oven can cook potatoes that well because now I'm just going to be in my bus eating potatoes. <laughs> Starch down your mind. Oh, that's the oven potatoes. from your bus? Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't realize that. That little oven, yeah. They brought it from The home. mushrooms are really good, too. Yeah. No, oh, everything worked out great. All the timing. The hard part about that kind of thing is the timing of it all coming out at the same time. Cooking any meal. It's timing everything well, to be hot and ready the as it worst. Comes. We're also trying to coordinate against each other as well. So yeah. we both want to play it at more or less True. at the same time. True. So it's like you're working independently on your things. I'm working independently on mine. And then we're constantly checking in with each other. Like, about how long do you think you got? How long do you think you got? You know what was actually better than both steaks? The company. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Kill yourself that when you're on the toilet later tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling, Gav? Right now, I feel great. Good. Yeah. Okay. Keep, good. keep us updated. I'm oh. feeling a gurgle. No, I'm just kidding. Are I feel really? great. <laughs> well, a little gurgle. I've only gotten food poisoning once in my once life. Once again, I ate a lot of both, so I'll, I'll never know which. What it's did true. Barbara eat Gus to give her food poisoning? She told me, though. Oh, she knows? Do you know, Gavin? What would no. you guess Barbara ate? Oh, um, sushi. I, mean, I was going to say fish as well. Some kind of fish. Did I tell you, Gus? You told me out there. No, I said I thought I had gotten food oh, poisoning. Oh, so it wasn't that thing? That was last night, oh. yeah. No, that was something else. So this is some other time you got food poisoning. The only time you got food poisoning in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it came from chicken. It was chicken. Yeah, it was oh, chicken wings. Up, right? Chicken wings, huh? Chicken wings that I had at uh, a, a local uh, Little Woodrow's. Actually, oh, really? Back down south when we used to work mm. down south. Yeah, I had them. I was actually out with, I think, you, Michael, and Lindsay. Went home, woke up at like 2 in the morning, and uh, wrecked my bathroom. For the next 12 hours. <laughs> nice. I'm lucky in that I've always had incidents in bathrooms that have a bath right next to the toilet. Oh. For when you're coming out of both ends at the same time. Oh, never had that. You never had that? No. Nah. That happened to me in New Zealand the other day, a couple weeks ago. Oh, Good really? Lord, you just guys bad. are just like, just hanging on by a thread. What's going on? When your body doesn't like something, it needs to get it out. Yeah, I guess so. And if it means liquefying it's, your bowels, yeah. then that's it's, what it's it going to use the emergency do. exit. Yeah. Good lord. You're gonna pop that raft out and what is that? Is it just like your body just floods your digestive system with fluids? So yeah, it's just like get everything out? Get everything out, yeah. Gross. Pretty yeah, disgusting. like what is the actual because you, you contract all your stomach and it comes up, right? But what causes all the grossness feeling before that? Yeah, I don't know. Is it just mental? Or are you I actually releasing just, like saliva up or whatever? Yeah. It's just sickness. Oh, yeah, I'm sure your, your brain's prepping. It, it knows. Your, your mouth fills with spit. It's how you know you got about to hurl, right? It's like oh. I also start, whenever I have to throw up, I always feel pressure, yeah. like, right up here. I get that, too. Like, in my temples. Maybe it's more I like a jaw, like, right here. I get, like, that uh, prep spit. Yeah. Um, 
I'm like, yeah. oh, no, it's coming. Which is just, you're trying to protect your teeth from stomach yeah. acid. So gross. This used to happen to me all the time in high school. I used to get these really bad migraines, and I was walking home from school, and I used to get these, like, black spots in my eyes, like, in my vision. Holy cow. And that's when I knew that I was going to get a migraine, so I would get home and knew, like, within an hour I was going to have this terrible migraine, and the only way that it would go away is if I threw up. Mm. And so I would, they would get so bad that I would have to vomit, but I knew every time after that I'd feel better. Glad you outgrew that. Me too. Yeah. yeah, I used to get them like once a month. I used to get ch- like horrible chest pains when I was a kid, when I was growing. Uh, and it's like they went to the doctor and everything. They said, no, it's just growing pains. I'm like, what the fuck does it mean? <laughs> like your muscles just pulling your ribs yeah, apart. Yeah, like, cartilage was just getting ripped apart Ugh. or something like, like that. Like the Hulk. It gets stabbing pain in my side. I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so we were talking about, you know, obviously we had to stake off. We're talking about food preparation. Have I talked to any of you about that show on Netflix, Nailed It? No. Nailed It? No. Yeah. It's a, a baking comp- competition where they have three competitors who aren't very good at baking, and they're presented with a really complex task that they have to create, and it's just for half an hour, it's edited it down. Do they it, get a recipe? Right. They have a recipe in front of them. It's like, okay. these are the steps. Make this incredible, like, uh, uh, a cake of, like, Jaws eating a surfer. So is it, like, kind of lame and make right. a, and a masterpiece with all the, all the stuff and all the right. instructions? And they can't. <laughs> And that's gonna be me and Gevin next year at the steak off. Yeah, it's I hope just you like know. watching this this train wreck. I watched an episode the other day where one of the bakers put her baking pan into the oven to start baking her cake, but she forgot to put flour in there. Oh no! So it was just like a, it was like a brick. Right? It was like I think uh, what the they had a lower third that explained uh, if you leave out flour, you're basically making an omelet. Mm. Yeah. Oh, she didn't. I thought you meant like flour to like make it non stick. No, no, so no. She said no flour in no the fl- rest. It was just eggs and, and cake. milk. That would be actually a really, a really funny series of pictures if you have like the complete masterpiece and then make it again like 10 times, but each one has a different ingredient missing. That's just what it looks like. Yeah. Just paste. Anyway, it's only like half hour episodes. It's really funny. Uh, so I'm the watch. cook in my house. I do a lot of the cooking. Mm, me all too. The cooking. Yeah, yeah, I bet you do. And, uh, I think it's kind of a one. ruse because I think everyone is like, oh, you're cooking so good so that you'll continue to cook, but then nobody else cooks. Yeah. I think there should be a deal, though. If someone, else, dishes, someone right? cooks, somebody else should do the cleanup. Do yeah. the dishes. That's always the way it is. Yeah. That's not in my house at all. You I do think. everything? A little bit. But you have kids. That's what kids are for, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I make them go outside and, like, work on the lawn and take the trash out and stuff They're like that. They're old enough for that. So does Ashley never cook? Are you just calling out Ashley in this? A little bit. Um, <laughs> no, no, they don't do the dishes. They don't. I mean, they're 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 bad. I mean, I they do do dishes, but I like get on them all fucking time about it. The big thing in our house is just get one fucking glass. That's it. Don't get a new glass every time you go. I use just a, a long, like sport cup. A sport cup. Sport cup. Well, just like a cup, like a water have. bottle. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I call it a sports cup. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like. Tony has like 19 glasses yeah. all over her nightstand, stacked sometimes, because I'll bring her coffee and then that, you know, she'll have to move a glass and it'll go on top of another one. And I just have like, yeah, one water bottle. I just reuse my water cup for night, like, because I just have like a water cup that I use on my bedside table. See, I find if you leave water out all night and it just is sat in the air, it gets all. I mean, I finish the water before. You like that little girl in signs? Yeah, so does everyone have a glass of water by their bedside? Am I the weirdo for not having one? It's a thing. You should do it. I started drinking water before I go to bed, and as soon as I wake up, and it makes a big difference. Hmm. Yeah, it make, it. it's very helpful. Yeah, I fill my bottle, and then I'll, if I wake up in the night and it's AAC and hot, I'll just have a sip. And then in the morning, I'll just chug it when I wake up. Yeah. Apparently, I, I heard, I don't know if it's true or not, or if it's just some, like, myth, but apparently drinking, like, ice water helps your metabolism, like, at night, because your body's that. trying to, like, heat it up. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're not meant to drink much water at night, though, because you'll just get up to pee. I never do. I do. I get up once. Every night? No, but if I drink a big glass of water beforehand, yeah. Mm. Like, I'll get up at, like, three or four. So you need a better I, bladder. You I wake up every stomach. four hours anyway, though. It's a weird thing with me. Do you really? Yeah. And then I can decide, all right, I'm just going to go back to sleep for another, like, four-hour unit. <laughs> and I do that. But I can, like, I can go to the, do that. Who is it that's only slept two hours at a time, or...? Like Einst- they say that about Einstein. Da Vinci, so like da Vinci. Yeah. I think it's Da Vinci. Yeah, and he's got in that rotation where he'd sleep two to three hours and would I mean, do that all day. Monty's sleep schedule was always all over the place. Mm-hmm. I never sleep yeah. for just random chunks whenever he felt like it, wouldn't he? Yeah, and, well, the same whenever he was not working, it was creativity too. Like he would have these huge bursts of creativity. Like he'd, he'd be working <sighs> on something for like out. two months. It's like Monty, we gotta get this. Like this, we gotta get <laughs> yeah. these shots done and everything. And he's like, uh huh, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. And like, I'll get to it. And then it's like we get closer and closer. It's like Monty. It's three days left for the deadline. We gotta get the shots. He goes, and he'd be like, "Uh huh, I did them last night." It's like <laughs> all of them. It's like, yeah, I did all of them. He just would stay up for forty hours and get them all done. Like massive burst of creativity. It's always amazing. 
Have you guys been really tired lately? Is that just me? I was tired in January. I think it's allergies. Is, is it allergies it? and the hour change, maybe? It might be allergies, because I've, I've never taken anything for allergies before, and I've been exhausted. Like, I've been sleeping 9, 10 hours a day, every day, for the last two weeks, and I'm still exhausted. Could be depressed. Maybe it's a tumor. It's not a tumor. There you go. <laughs> Um, but no. is that allergies? Is that something that yeah, would be. make you tired? Someone said it could be lack of like vitamin D since it's been pretty good. That's true. Who told you that, Becca? No. She's a vitamin D enthusiast. So are my parents. Yeah. I would bet, I would bet it's Trevor. Oh, he gives me plenty <laughs> of vitamin D. <laughs> oh, you know vitamin, what I'm saying? vitamin D. That's good. That's good. The, uh, but uh, the best thing about vitamins now is g- vitamins are all gummies now. So you just take one of Right? You gummies. love gummies. Well, they're, they're I love too, gummies. They're too good now. You right. want to take more than two. I do. I take a ton of vitamins every day. <laughs> I take about a handful. Bernie's just bursting with vitamins. Yeah, it's a great idea. Whoever made uh, vitamins into gummies, uh, they were thinking. That was smart. because you don't like swallowing a pill? It's, it's good. It's just eat a gummy. It's like, uh, you're like a dog where they put like a pill in like the little green ear, like the little pill pocket. Yeah, exactly. They don't want to take the pill, but if it's like in a side of treat, yeah, no problem. Gotta like put it in peanut butter. Feed it to them. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but when I was a kid, the, we had... They didn't really have any more. The children's aspirin tasted like oranges, which is a terrible idea mm. because then kids would just eat a bunch of fat. Can you OD on aspirin? Yes, I think it does something like, like it thin your blood. your blood. Yeah, you just you hemorrhage out. Ugh. Yeah. Have you ever wondered how? Th- well, there are some things in the world that just work, but I don't really understand the science of it. Like, when it, whenever you have to force feed a a, pa- a pet, like a pill or something, or they have to have something, you just kind of just shove it in their mouth and close it. Like that's yeah. the method to get him to eat it, and it just goes away. But right. I feel like if someone did that to me, there's no way it would go down. No way. But it just it works with animals. Yeah, they just like I guess I'll swallow this thing and then move yeah. on with life. Although I've I've recently been using like a squirty syringe thingy. Although I had a dog, we did this thing with my dog growing up where we would do whatever we could to make the dog eat a piece of lettuce, and it was f- amazing. Like we put it. It rubbed it in bacon grease and then Why covered it. Why did you want it. to eat lettuce? I'm just curious. Like the, dog, experiment. the dog wouldn't eat lettuce. Like we'd, we'd give it like leftovers or something and like, a, like I'd hand it my cheeseburger when I was a kid and the lettuce would always be left afterwards. And one time I put bacon grease and uh, peanut butter all over a piece of lettuce and gave it to the dog. The dog took it, chomp, 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 swallowed, spit out a perfectly clean piece of lettuce. It was amazing. <laughs> Dogs hate lettuce. Yeah. Can't say I'm sure. Dogs hate lettuce. Please don't. <laughs> Please no more. Was the grapes thing was, did the do dogs they get sick from grapes? Apparently, dogs can't yeah. eat grapes. They can't eat grapes. Why not? Dogs yeah. can't eat grapes. I don't know. Them. I'm not a dog. R- I read uh, like some onions and chocolate, dark chocolate especially. Dogs can't eat a lot of crap. I think the chocolate thing they tell kids. So kids won't feed their dogs chocolate. I'm not sure I believe it. Why would any kid give up chocolate for a dog? Because kids are stupid. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I think it's funny to feed a dog chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. Well, you'd be able to find that out if that was fake. It's like if you look up on Google, it tells you Santa Claus is oh, real. Oh, I've seen horrible videos from veterinary clinics of dogs just like, just vomiting an incredible volume. Oh uh, my god, why? Because somebody fed chocolate. Oh. Yeah. But you still don't believe it? I'm just making a joke. Over here. Oh. I'm just providing <laughs> content for the world. Some of the things I say over here I actually don't believe, believe it or not. <laughs> what? what are you going to do? It's true. Wait, how do we keep up? Um, man, there's been... There was, there's been, it's been crazy in Austin because it's South by Southwest, right? No, oh, I fucking hate it. Thankfully, that's finally over. But you see, the Eric Vespi waited three, three and a half hours in line to see Isle of Dogs last night or two nights ago. I didn't want to see that movie. Oh, I what? don't, I also don't want to see I that don't movie. understand looks... why every dog in that movie is a white person. Wait, what, what do you mean? You like, mean cast? Right. It's like, it's a movie set it's in Anderson, Japan dude. with Japanese people, but white dogs. Like, there's not one Japanese person who's a dog. Maybe I'm wrong, but, like, I look at the well, cast. The kid's Japanese. Right, but it's like, all the people are Japanese and all the dogs are white. I don't well, I think know. The whole, di- the whole point is the dogs don't speak English. Yeah, maybe, there's, they a maybe there's a story English. behind it. No, I know, but in real life. Do- <laughs> <laughs> hey, St. Patrick's Day, is that cultural appropriation? I think it's taken that way some, mm. a lot of times. Well, because everyone does it. Like, everyone, like, I'm Irish. I don't give a shit. If people celebrate my heritage by getting hammered and wearing fucking leprechaun outfits. I mean, in any other culture, that would be wildly insulting. But yeah. to me, I think it's fucking funny. Go for it. Do the Irish embrace St. Patrick's Day? I've never been to Ireland on St. Pace. Uh, I mean, it's not yeah, even a big deal yeah. there. That yeah, they don't give a shit. Is. I just, I'm just annoyed that it's so much better than... What, okay, what is the English day? Boxing day. No. Uh, Guy Fox. Bastille day. I'll give you a hint. It's St. Someone's Slivens. St. Christopher? St. Slivens? <laughs> St. 
Gibbons Day. Saint Squidge. <laughs> I love that beanie baby. Do you have that beanie baby yet? No, I don't have squidge, squidge yet. I need Saint, to get a squidge. Saint George's Day. Saint, Saint George, George was the patron saint of Hippopotamus. Well, can I strike this mic? By the way, Mike, can I? That was a really confusing sentence. Can I take off my lavalier? Okay, come sit on this thing. I think the the uh, legend behind Saint George is that he killed a dragon. Oh yeah, who's Richard Lionheart? Who? Richard Lionheart? Lionheart? Uh, cousin of Saint Smidgens or whatever it's called. Was oh, it? A very Lionheart. Okay, I thought you might know that off the top of your head. Mm -mm. He, uh, I was reading that in a historical document. Is he the guy he in the Robin Hood cousin? In the Crusades? Is that what it was? He, he died around like 1100. So. Did he have a pet snake? No. So apparently, St. Patrick. <laughs> the, the story goes that he drove the snakes out of Ireland, but apparently that's a metaphor for he was driving the pagans out of Ireland. And the pagans. They just refer to the pagans as snakes. The pagans were very quick to point that out to you every St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Richard the Lionheart not a big fan. Uh, a was pagan. a central Christian commander during the Third Crusade, Stonehenge. leading the campaign after the departure of Philip II of France, scoring considerable victories against the Muslim counterpart Saladin, although he did not retake Jerusalem from Saladin. When did he die? Uh, 1199? Here's what I've learned about this dude. Uh, there's a lot of places in Europe that claim to be the place where he died. It's like a thing. I don't know why. The according to Wikipedia, it's some place in France. It looks there like. you go, France. Yeah, a lot of places claim it. Why would they claim that? Especially if like that information that makes it historical. exists. It's like a thing. He died here. Yeah, but if that information exists publicly somewhere, then why would I don't know? It just seems weird to like lie about something to improve tourism or whatever it is when that information exists. I think it's like the is what are the Dark Ages? That's somewhere in the Dark Ages, right? Somewhere on there. P is, is Peter Hay I'm sorry to go back. I'm, I'm like reading a bunch of things. Is Peter Hayes Irish? Yeah. He wrote, it's a big deal, and the vast, vast majority of us like that it's become an international thing. Like yeah. it? Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, that's because of the New World. Dark Ages. Did I tell you about the first time I went to oh, Ireland and I uh, got yeah. a cab? No. And the guy, the guy that was driving it, he said, I said, I'm really happy to be coming to uh, Ireland. He goes, he goes, oh, you've never been here before? And I said, nope. I said, and my family's Irish, so I just, like, I've always wanted to come back here. And he, like, stopped, slowed the car way down. And he goes, you're Irish? He goes, you're of Irish descent? And I said, yeah. And he goes, from America? And I said, yeah. He goes, I've never heard anyone of that before. And I said, oh, really? You haven't? He goes, no, fucking all the time. And then he starts going again. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, what the, who this fucking guy? And I was like, thought we were having this sincere conversation. He's like, yeah, fuck off. But uh, he told me that there's something like, there's something like 10 times the amount or more of people of Irish descent in the world than there are actually Irish people. Hmm. Like, there's more Irish descent people outside of Ireland than there are actually people in Ireland. That makes by sense. a significant amount. Well, I think there's... Some a similar vein in that, but I think there's more Jewish people in New York City than there are in Israel. Yeah, I, I think yeah. I've heard that before. Wow, is that yeah. true? Mm -hmm. Well, they a lot of them relocate relocated about the middle of last century. Also, Israel's tiny. Yeah, you've teeny, been there, right? Teeny. I have. I went there for birthright. It was awesome. It was beautiful. All expenses paid. All expenses yeah. paid. Yeah, eight point five expense. million people in Israel. Eight point five million people. That's a lot. And not all of those are Jewish. But not people. all of those are Jewish. Yeah. No, I wouldn't even guess eight point five million people in Israel. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. And it's just a tiny little sliver. Who pays for these trips? I th I'm pretty sure I've asked you this before. I don't um, understand. Rich Jewish people in synagogues. They just fund the faith. Ben benefactors. What is the word? Is that the word? Yeah, it's benefactors. Not, benefactors. It's not like a Jewish tax. No. Nope. They take from. No, but there's no Jewish tax. Hmm. You don't have to pay a Jewish tax when you're born Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, your eternity. babies can't pay taxes. Don't be stupid, Barbara. Right? I know. Do you have to be above a certain age to pay tax? No, you said to earn income. Right. Right, but if someone gives you a million dollars and you're eight, yeah. do you pay tax? Yes. Huh. Gift tax, estate tax, maybe even. Fair play. Gives it to you. I'm trying to think up uh, loopholes? <laughs> <laughs> My money's not taxed if I give it to a baby first, <laughs> and then the baby gives it back to me. The real tax, though, is giving an eight-year-old a million dollars. That would be horrible for that person's upbringing. I want to know if, if without any that parents... That baby would get audited so hard. <laughs> <laughs> but without any parents... If you just gave a briefcase of cash to an eight-year-old, what would he, how far could he get with it? Like, would he end up buying a Ferrari? So I actually had an idea for a uh, feature on the front page of Rooster Teeth 
way back when we started Achievement Hunter, when when Jack started doing written articles for the front page, mm -hmm. and uh, wildly popular. I w yeah, wildly popular. <laughs> Best achievement guide of all time, or whatever it was. What was the, the thing they put on the front of every video? The greatest achievement guide of all time. That's what it was, yeah. And uh, he, I remember he played some World War II game that had like, it had, when he got shot, it, the screen would turn red to be veins on the side, and he kept screaming it was spaghetti. I can't remember what the fuck the game was. I have to go back and watch that. But I wanted to do a um, little feature, which is give um, a group of people a hundred bucks each. So it's like to get ten people, it's a thousand bucks. So we're gonna give you a hundred bucks and then a disposable camera. And then you all you have to do is take a picture of whatever you buy. And that's it. And then turn the camera back into us. And if you turn the camera back in, we'll go like just so we get the cameras back, we get like fifty bucks. But I want to try like a homeless person. If you gave a homeless person a hundred bucks, what would they buy with a hundred bucks? If you gave a kid a hundred bucks, what would a kid buy with a hundred bucks? And then like Joel. <laughs> <laughs> but like just random people, what would they spend a hundred dollars on? It's just totally disposable income. And also you've got to spend it in like the next week. You mm. gotta spend the hundred dollars. What would you spend it on? I if I had to spend it on something, I probably would buy I probably would back then I probably would have bought a video game at sixty bucks. Does I'd it have to be something groceries. for yourself? No, those can be stipulations. No. Just have to put like what it was and document what it was. I forgot about that idea. It's a good one. Yeah, I'd be curious. Like but what, you do, can, what do people do with money? You couldn't buy more than thirty things. 30. Oh, because of the disposable camera? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well you could always buy another camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then, or put everything in one photo. Or put everything in one photo. Look at that, Barbara. Oh Thank shit! You. That's a really boring. Hopefully photo. nobody <laughs> buys a blowjob. <laughs> that would be really awkward to get that back from the photo place. When was the last time you got photos developed? I think you about to ask when was the last time you got a blowjob. <laughs> I thought they were just. All right, well, let's talk about that. When was the last? Uh, Barbara, when was the last time you got a blowjob? Last time I got a blowjob. Film developed. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine. I either. must have. I must have been a teenager. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a long time. You could just use a disposable. Camera on the podcast mm -hmm. on off topic. Yeah, let's just chuck this one. But you had to get them developed, not them. Oh, an, intern. an intern. Where did they get <laughs> film developed? There's a couple camera stores here. Camera stores here? You, you don't have your own dark room? Have you done a dark room yet, Wes? Yeah, in college. In college. I failed the class, the only photography class I've ever taken. <laughs> you failed the only photography class you've ever taken? Yeah. Wow, that's ironic. Our, our official photographer <laughs> <laughs> failed the photography class. Yeah, but it, was, you're great. It, was, it was good having you here while you worked here. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, had to go this way. I've never do, done darkroom stuff ever. Never. I did darkroom well, stuff. Well, you failed your ma machinima class, right? Well, yeah, in my college? machinima class. That's yeah. what I failed. Yeah, uh, Matt didn't make it into film school. He just, I think, recently revealed that in, I think, the 15th anniversary like doc. Like his grades weren't high enough? No, it's just he had to get accepted into the film school at UT, and he didn't get accepted. So he got a communications degree and Probably not a Probably his degree. personality. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Just Probably awful just to be around. Hanging with the wrong crowd. Yeah. That kind of thing. Patrick's telling me that CVS still develops film. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. pharmacies. I Walgreens does. still do it. Farm, like Walgreens and CVS. Walgreens does a thing now where I will go with, uh, like, my picture wall that we've talked about before. Yeah. I go with the USB stick and just print out a bunch of photo quality prints. Do you just like print staples? Because they're not, they look like garbage. I don't have a photo I, paper? I, I don't have an inkjet printer and I don't have a color printer of any kind. This is like, yeah, it's one of those things I can never justify the expense because you use it like once every two years. Maybe you should spend your hundred bucks on a nice photo printer. <laughs> nah. Oh, did you hear that neck pop? Uh -huh. Yeah. That was good. I never, I never can make that work. Have you that. grown that photo wall at all? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Had to remove a couple people. <gasps> oh, shit. Hey, why are you pointing this way? Oh, my God. You move uh, on. No, it's nah, fine. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care. Man, I had a really frustrating. Experience this weekend. Oh, I feel like I want to guess. Was you it related to South guess? by? No, no, it was not related to South by. I don't want to guess. So uh, I'm going to do a little bit of renovation. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go to a store that has tiles and look at tiles for this renovation I want to do. Good Bathroom? for you. Hmm? Bathroom? Uh, kitchen. kitchen. So uh, I'm like, driving and I see this. Like I, I, I went to one place, then I was driving back home and I saw another place on the side of uh, the road. I was like, oh, there's another tile place here. I'm going to go in there and check it out. Walk in, they're like, hey, welcome. You know, what are you up to? I said, I want to do a renovation. I want to look for tiles for my kitchen. They're like, great. You know, what are you looking for? I tell them, they're like, okay, this is the part of the store you want to be in. You can look here to here, like all the stuff that you're going to want is right here. Great. So I'm there with uh, Esther. So we far, so good. We spent about an hour and a half going through every tile they have. We're like, this, what about this, what about that? Finally, we have like, okay, this is what we want to get. I go up to the front of the store and I'm like, all right. And they give you a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write down what you want. So like, I wrote it down. 
And I'd run a bunch of stuff down, scratch it all out. Finally found the one that we liked. It was like, okay, go up to the front of the store. We're like, all right, you know, this is the one that we're going to want. You know, how, how does this process work? Do we like tell you and you order it or what happens? They're like, oh, no, we don't sell the tile to you. I go said, ahead. what? What? They go, we're just a showroom. We're a wholesaler. You have to call someone else to buy the tile and they buy the tile and you pay them. And I said, do you have a list of people who sell your tile? No, we don't. <laughs> so what you, is the business? And I was what? like, I was like, how do they so, pay rent? So you have a showroom full of tile and you let me spend an hour and a half here and I can't buy any of the tile? They're like, yeah. I was like, uh, okay. And I just left. So now you're not going to get that tile? I'm not going to get that tile. I spent an hour and a half there. How did they not even have the... They didn't even ask me when I got there. Like, Oh my God. <laughs> no one told me. They were like, here, yeah, go look at the tile. Write it down. Like, what the fuck did I write it and down? Do what what, they, with what it? do they do with the paper? I don't know. You just keep it? Maybe... <laughs> Well, how does the person get paid who you're talking to? I don't know. Where's their paycheck yeah, come from? Yeah, because there's no reference. Like, if you do find out who is the <laughs> retailer of that, like, how do they get any reference? How does back the company make store? any money? I want to open a grocery store and then they they bring everything to me. I'm like, you should probably go to H E B and buy all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, we don't sell it to you. We'll yeah. sell it to them. Oh, no, but don't even say H E B. Oh yeah, oh, it's at some that. store. Yeah. It's cool that you like avocados. I, I've never been so. Frustrated and angry what at the same time. Oh, well, I guess it's not a waste of your time because you actually did pick out the tile you wanted. Yeah, but they're the only place that carries that tile. It's like, like, they don't even carry like, it. Like, they, they don't, don't carry that's it. What they said like we have our own custom tile. And it was like, what is happening? Also, if that was the response I got from someone working at a place like that, I would have punched them in the face. Like so <laughs> passive aggressive, just like yeah, sorry. Yeah. Like come on, dude. But isn't that like like Tesla showrooms in Texas? A little, actually, a little bit. Although you actually can then order one from you, California. Yeah, you you get on their computer and get on the website, yeah. and then you can order it there. Yeah. But the person sitting there couldn't sell it to you. I, the rules might have changed, but I think yeah. that's still the case. They couldn't even like, tell you like prices for anything. How do you say the name of that car? Tesla. 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 Okay. You'll see Tesla. I realize that I say Tesla. A lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah. I think Blaine does. Well, how do you say the steak that I made for these peeps today? I don't know why I said peeps. <laughs> no, I, no idea. These I said homies babes. over Subi? here. No, uh, the Rib region, on? the steak, the co the American version of Kobe Wagyu. steak. What is it gonna say? It? Wagyu. 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 Yeah. Wagyu. Why? I would say wagyu. I've heard wagyu and I've heard wagyu. I, I say wagyu, hmm. which is wrong. There's no W A Y. It's W A G Y U. G Y. Yeah, wagyu. Wagyu's right. I've always said wagyu. I don't know why. I just call it W. W, w beef. Steak? Dub. W-W-W-W-W beef. So, Tony got these... I'm so tired after eating steak. I didn't even eat that much. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I want to hibernate. I had a beer and some steak, and I'm just like, I'm just going to sleep. I feel great. You guys need some vitamin D. Bunch of potatoes. Tony got some Well, you slept 12 hours today, apparently. <laughs> she got some 11. speakers oh. that have lights on them, right? Fuck that. Why? Oh, they, like, light up. They take... They, like, listen to the game, and it's like, pff, dynamic lighting. But then no! I thought, but then I thought, actually, that's a great idea, but they're not doing it right. But I want to know if there's a product that does this, where... The lighting takes information from the game. So, like, if I have 30 rounds in my gun in PUBG, I'm like, pew, 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 and the light was white. But then as I was getting down to, like, five bullets left, it would go red. And if I see red, it's like, you should reload. But I don't have to look at the HUD to mm -hmm. see the information. And I think they could do more with lighting that actually takes game information and doesn't just listen yeah, to the The sound. game has to then, like, there has to be a process for that data transfer to happen. Yeah, but I mean, that data is it. going through the game. Right, but it's not so coming out of the game. Like, you need the data to come out. Well, okay, so for a lot of stuff, you could do it. So if you're being shot from the left, you could have red light flash yeah. on the left because that information is in the audio information. Yeah. I think games should punish you for reloading before the clip's done. We well, should lose the ammo? Mm, or it takes longer. Like, because you're, you're pulling the clip out of the gun and putting bullets in to a clip. That's a lot slower than going clip, clip, right? So yeah. you're saying it should take longer if you have an empty clip? No. If you have an empty clip, you just throw away your empty clip. That's it. Oh, and so you're just talking about pulling the bullets out of the other clip? I keep thinking what you, you guys are saying It's like topping clip, it up with individual really bullets. Like, you understand? Yeah, say so you fired four times. What you're not you throwing the whole thing away. You're just putting four bullets I keep in. thinking you guys are saying uh, clit, and it's like really messing me Top up. off my clit? Yeah, it's just <laughs> like every time you say clip, I hear clit. Clit, clit. That's it. So clit. if I've got five bullets left in my clip, and I reload, <laughs> right? I would just assume. Then i got to put 25 bullets in, bop, 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 to get up to 30. Or you just chuck it, lose the five. That's the other anywhere. way you could do it. Yeah, yeah. I see that, what you're saying. That yeah. way it makes more sense. That way it does make more sense. Or you just end up with like clips that have five bullets in them from when you need them later. Because <laughs> my whole thing is like, when I play PUBG, I run around for 20 minutes. I see something on a hill, 
350 yards away. And I'm like, <laughs> I can kill that. Bang, bang, bang. Nah, I'm not going to get close. Then I reload immediately. Like, I just, if I fire my gun, I reload. Absolutely. I'm one of those people. And if I get a kill, I definitely reload. So Which is not a good idea. What would you do in real life? If you fired four out of 30, would you then just thumb no. four more bullets in? No, yeah. See, that's, no, not at all. I would just fire until I had no more bullets in my gun, then I would put a new clip in. But if you had one bullet left, you probably wouldn't rely on that one. I maybe, yeah, probably not. I probably would swap it out. But I also wouldn't be chucking away my clips. Those are expensive. <laughs> you know? It's like I would be keeping my clips and then just reloading them with bullets. What am I doing? What went wrong in my life that I'm like running around shooting and stuff, defending my life? If there was a, an FPS that actually had real world stuff, like you actually have to pull the thing out in VR and then put it in your pocket so you don't lose it and then reload. I think some games, VR stuff like that where you have to pull up the clip and you have to like line it up. Yeah, drive. games just, it wouldn't be fun. No. I saw, I saw a game and I can't remember what the fuck it was, but it was a very like pro shooter from what I recall. Very straightforward, but they had a thing in there where once out of every 10,000 reloads, it would just do a random oh, animation. That was Battlefield. Was, Battlefield. was it Battlefield? Yeah, because yeah. one of them you realized that you realized like this. Yes. <laughs> like, like, really. And then one, like, and the, what's, what's the gun the, yeah. Yeah, starts, like, chomping. Yeah. I didn't see that one. I think I saw that one on Reddit, the okay, one you're talking about. Reddit, yeah. But this one was, I saw one where the guy, like, lets the gun go and it floats in midair and he just starts throwing bullets and they start going into the gun. And the people's reactions <laughs> on, on whatever they're recording are like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> because I love stuff like that. I do too. I, do, I, wish, I wish more people did stuff like that. Like, or like when you play a game on a certain day and it does stuff. You know? Yeah. I'm super, super, super looking forward to Sea of Thieves coming out today. And I realize by the time that most people hear this podcast, Sea of Thieves will be out. And it'll have major network and connectivity issues because everyone's trying to play. It comes out, what, tonight at 11 or something? 11 p.m. tonight. When I walked over to the podcast, Michael, Jeremy, Ryan, and Jack were in full character making a, a Let's Play video. Oh, playing Sea of Thieves? Yeah. Are they being pirates? Yeah. They playing it early? Yeah. I guess so. Can we play Can we play it early? I don't know. I didn't think so. Is there an embargo? I can't do it anyway. I mean, you can't, re- can't release it early. They're not streaming. There's no embargo as far as I know because they said that. But I didn't know the game was active. Up. The servers are active. Yeah, that's what they said. Like you wouldn't mm-hmm. be able to play till the servers are active anyway. Yeah, the uh, I can't play anyway because I can't level up my character until I can play with the kids and we don't play on the weekdays. So you have to. Gotta wait till Friday. Mm. Mm. You gotta like secretly level. Just make two accounts. I can't. How am I gonna secretly level? Make two accounts. What am I doing with my life? I'm making two accounts. Because you want to play during the week, and you're like, yeah, yeah, learn the mechanics. No, learn all I want to play with my kids. I'm not, I'm not really that fast. <laughs> that sounds like it's not a, pro- not a problem then. No, I'm just saying I gotta wait. You know, it's just like be patient. I want to play with my kids. It'd be great if I could play my, with my kids tomorrow. Can't do it. Is Ashley gonna play with you? She will play. It's the so one it's game in our household that complete, everybody plays. And complete you need four people. Yeah. That's the only game all of you play. It's tough. We're How all is gamers. That possible? We're all gamers, but like she won't play PUBG, and the kids love it. There's something that JD refuses to play. I feel like Ashley would love PUBG. Yeah. That's weird that she has the, the The other game that we play, everyone plays, is Don't Starve. But I'm the holdout on that because I fucking hate that game. The game's, and I'm like, the but game's I, tough. I will play it out of, like, just solidarity. To socialize with I'm them. like, all right, I'm playing. <laughs> I played that FTL game that you recommended. That's, that's Don't hard. call it that FTL game. It's just FTL. It's hard. It's hard. Good. I die real quick. Yeah, for the loss. Put on I, easy. What, what do you gotta put on easy? No, nope. I'm never gonna play a game on easy. You have yeah, to play this one on you easy. You cannot. You can't play FTL on normal. You'll play FTL on normal for hundred hours, then you're gonna move, put it on easy. Just and you still won't your, win. Save yourself the hundred hours to move it to easy now. You can win. Ye, you get to the end. You, you get won? zone eight, sector oh. eight, whatever it is. Yeah, and then you, you gotta fight, fight the mothership the, multiple times. It's weird though because the rebellion is the cool. bad guy, you which is like a weird so much hair. thing. <laughs> For a narrative, yeah. Usually, the rebellion are like the upstart good guys fighting against the, the underdog. Yeah, the empire or the establishment. <laughs> but no, you're the establishment, I guess. I just feel like I can, I can last. Everything's under control. Minor hiccups here and there, and then suddenly everything will go wrong, and it's completely unrecoverable. Play They Are Billions sometimes. That's a fucking game that'll drive you insane. They Are Billions. Yep. Yeah. It's a it's a RTS kind of survival rogue game. Like like. It's like FTL where you just do a run through the game. That's it. And like the the you just learn how to play better. And uh yeah, this and on that they are billions. You can play for like two hours and like one zombie gets into your walls <laughs> and you, it's just everything fucking falls apart. Have you played Into the Breach? No. I and I can't believe that I haven't played it because I love FTL so much. It's a very different game, but very good. It looks it looks like uh Advance Wars? Kinda. 
Yeah, is that? Yeah. Damn. Have you guys played Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes. <laughs> okay. So That's like Gus. That might be Gus's favorite game of all time. Maybe it's up there. Yeah. So I'm. I've just started. I'm. I'm probably five hours in. Oh, it's good. And game. I'm bloody loving it. It's but fucking great. Game. It feels like a very big game, and I've never got a platinum trophy before. So I think I might go for it. You know I, who I else? Got the, I got the platinum in this. But what should I be doing? It's like a slow build for those for those trophies because I I feel like it's a game like Skyrim where it's like damn I wish I was doing this the whole time. Uh, just start. I mean, there's really out. nothing that's gonna fuck you up. No. What I would recommend is just try to collect as many collectibles. That's it. Uh, things as you can. Like yeah. the memories and those those audio transcripts. Those, like the little figures. Yeah. Like and that then, kind of stuff. Then there's the but, panorama stuff that you do where you like. Also, just even like the the materials, like the supplies, like the flowers and. Herbs and like the wood and all of that. Like you don't ever want to be at a point where you're like, "Fuck, I'm out of wood. I need arrows. I'm gonna spend the next half hour just finding wood." Yeah, like that shit's annoying. So I, when I played, I almost never fast traveled because I just wanted to pick everything up along the way. Oh, uh, okay. The fast travel mechanic is interesting because you need an item to be able to do it. Yes. I Eventually, you, you get I... to a point where you don't anymore. Oh, okay. But yeah. I told you how I didn't know fast travel existed the first time I played Skyrim. You're a lunatic. It's because I, I had never played a game like that before. It was like my first. Um, RPG. So you're just walking everywhere? Yeah. I was just like, man, there's so much walking in this game. <laughs> well, that, some games, yes, I'm an idiot. Some, some games <laughs> are fine. Like, like I said, in Horizon, I didn't. I almost never fast Well, I enjoyed also like everything along the way and also just the, how beautiful the game was mm -hmm. and getting to like take that all in. But Pretty at one good. point, I was like, all right. I don't so, fast how travel. How many hills do I have to go over? Shadow of War. Because I feel like the load screens are yeah. long and I can just do that like elf run that I just run through everything as fast as I can and just get to where I'm going. Yeah. So, so uh, it, Ashley warned me that game, I've been playing Shadow of War, she warned me there's a big grind in it. She said, yes. you said that, there's a big grind in the game. Yes. I was like, He's, no, what is he talking about? I fucking hit that. Yeah, point. I stopped playing at that point. Holy shit, dude. That's a long fucking grind. Act four? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like, the, you're playing the game, the game's really fun, and it's like, okay, now you have to play the game totally different and just do this thing over and over and over and over. And like, no, I, I don't, I'm not going to do this. Yeah. I, that, that's, I think... A mode, or that's a part of the game they put in to push microtransactions. Mm. Yeah, like XP and all that. Yeah, because then you're like, yeah. well, fuck, I could just buy. You can buy your way out of that. Yeah, yeah like I can just buy ah. these, these orcs to defend this, and I don't have to worry about it. Yep. It's, it always sucks when you, when you like, you know the grind achievement, and you're saving it right to the end. So hopefully, by the time everything else is done, you have to grind less. So, but whenever this, like that Fallout Four, did you do the Nuka Cade no, tokens? No, I one? did not. God damn, 100,000? Like 10,000 would have been too many. Holy shit. Like people go so, for that so bad. Gears of War achievement where you got to get 10,000 kills or something like that? Yeah. What was it? Well, seriously? Was 10, yeah, seriously, seriously 2.0 yeah. Um it was more than that. So, maybe it was. In Horizon Zero Dawn, you can platinum it, but then they added, I'm just going to warn you right now. You can platinum it, but then they added DLC trophies on top of the platinum. If you want to get all the DLC trophies, you're going to need to play the game a second time on Ultra Hard. You, you need to get it in New Game Plus Ultra Hard. So even if you finish it Ultra Hard your first playthrough, it doesn't count because you also need a New Game Plus Ultra Hard playthrough. It's such a great game, though. Shit. I'm playing on Hard. I just set it to Hard. Yeah. So I played it through everything the first time, and then I just when I played my Ultra Hard for my second run, I just like went through as fast as I could and just tried to like get through it as quickly as I could. So I did, I did everything, including the New Game Plus Ultra Hard. I think total was about 70 hours. Okay, I can do it. 70, 80 hours somewhere there. Not terrible. The the will you okay? So, bit of advice for you. There is one trophy related to doing all of the hunting grounds. Uh, you you probably haven't seen a hunting ground yet. It's like these challenges ah, where you go, great. and there's someone who's like, "Oh, I need you to go out there and kill ten of these creatures within two minutes if you want to." Oh shit! Get it. Uh, you can lower the difficulty to easy when you're doing the hunting grounds, and then put it back up to hard because some of those hunting grounds are fucking difficult. Good to know. Yeah, I love the I love the game so far. Okay, yeah, it's really great. I uh, climb in those whatever those tall the tall necks. What tall, tall necks? Neck. Yeah, but I, I love the story in it. Even though I, it's a familiar story, as you play along, it's like it's not. You have probably seen similar stories. I just, I thought it was fucking dope. I thought like, there were some really interesting new twists on it, though. Yeah, there there were some things like finding out like play, you play a lot of the game and you're like I still don't understand why this game's called. Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn, Dawn. like yeah. what does this mean? And then like they start kind of teasing you, and then you start like, what happened to the world? And I think that they unveil all of that really effectively. Yeah, the name too is it becomes very important mm -hmm. down the road. Cool. Yeah, it's a good game. It's a good game. I can't say enough good things. Everyone about should play that. I think that game it, it's 
if you're undecided about buying a PS4, that game is worth buying a PS4. For. Totally got swamped by everyone's love for uh, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. And because it came out at the same time. And I was like, I was playing Horizon. I was like, everyone else should be playing this fucking game and not this fucking Zelda game. I mean, the Zelda game is good, too. Zelda game's great. Didn't Zelda. it win Game of the Year? Or Depends it... who you ask. Depends uh, who you ask. Yeah, do you ever notice, Barb, that in the video game world, that like every game has a Game of the Year edition? Yeah. It's like literally every game. It's like they probably plan it from the moment they put the game out. <laughs> yeah. The Game of the Year edition. It's like when they make those baseball caps that says like World Champions. Or yeah. Like, like in uh, any playoff. <laughs> they end up like in a games. shelter somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you're on the road. Uh, Gus was showing me Battlegrounds on mobile. It was surprisingly good. It runs pretty well. I was surprised. Adam Baird was like perplexed playing it. I can't. I can't believe how well it runs. So there's some parts of it that run better than the PC version. <laughs> good job. Yeah. Uh, really it, subtle. It is. Rubbish. You know, I'm good. It is still a bit su suffering from some server performance. I think it's because everyone's trying to jump on it right now. That's what I see. Thieves, man. I just want to prepare. Anytime there's an online game that comes out, people always flip their fucking shit when the game doesn't work on day one. If it works on day one, it's a miracle. It's a it, fucking it's miracle. It's a miracle, or nobody likes it. Nobody bought it. Yeah, or nobody bought it. Right. That's a good point. It's just, it's just like I feel like Halo's always run pretty well day one. Uh, so uh, that's a depends. Massive collection. Hey, was, oh, you're right. Yeah. And that was just old games. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, I was telling Gus earlier, the, remember the game type we used to play? Uh, Griff Bull. No, no, no. The, yeah. For Halo 2, we play on Lockout. Elimination. Yeah. And we'd have one life, and everyone had a random weapon. And so it's like, I was telling him, it's like, we were even playing like a Battle Royale game back in the day, you know, where you just have yeah. everybody spawns with random weapons, you kill somebody, you get their weapon. You know. That was o class. Always some dope who had the plasma pistol who was hating life. We should do a charge punch. That's all you can do. I don't know why you don't ever want to do let's plays in our old game types. Me? Yeah. What? What am I? What am I? I don't do let's plays. Yeah, but if we all got together and played the same old Halo Two games we played, in you know, we can also just get together and play a video game. We don't have to record every fucking thing we do. I would totally play Halo Two. Yeah, with but you. what if funny shit happens? It's a waste. It's a waste. <laughs> our <laughs> life went unrecorded. Just fun. Our mm -hmm. life went unrecorded. I don't know. I hate. I hate if something really good happens in a video game off camera. It's like. That would have been amazing. Is it well, now you do it for work that you feel like anything you do with video games is just wasted time. I think I just really like recorded. making content. <laughs> I really like sharing the experience. Mm. You can always record stuff from Xbox and PC now. I mean, just like yeah. okay. retroactively say, "Oh, that was awesome." Record that. Yeah. Were you playing like, video game together? You and me. Yeah. Have we ever done that? Nope. Do what? <laughs> <laughs> we. I think the only time we have ever played a video game together is horse. We played uh, Halo. Um, oh, one of those horse yeah. competitions. Did that I was, win? Of course you won. Yes. Yeah. I think I got two or something. Two victories. I won the first tournament. Did it was you really? Me versus Carrie. Oh. Carrie was like some slimy little intern. I think we have enough on screen personalities of the company out where we could do some we could do some serious tournaments. All we internal. Could. Do you remember that Smite tournament we did? Yeah. That was so fun. PUBG one's still my favorite. When we all got in PUBG. That's I wish we'd do more of that stuff. Let's do it. Yeah. Remember somebody was somebody was saying that um I've always liked the the battle royale. Like style of like you die and you're out. Like I love playing Minecraft on hardcore, where if you die, all your shit, you just that's it. You We're doing that right now. Actually, you can't go back into the world in Minecraft if you if you die um, with your same account. And I want to do one where and I talked about it on a podcast years ago where we had a defined area. We all started it was pairs, and then the area got smaller and smaller over time. And then like over the course of like 48 hours, so we were playing and then it was last person standing. I mean it's basically Hunger Games, mm -hmm. you know. But I had forgotten that we had talked about that. And I, I didn't even know that I had mentioned it on a podcast. And somebody I, had pointed it out. I received a tragic piece of information today. Let me think about this. And by tragic, oh, I mean... Oh. You lost a save for Minecraft. No. Okay. What is tragic it? information. It's to do with you and me. You what? and I. You guys are actually dead. And everything <laughs> that you've been envisioning <laughs> is just a dream. Well, we've, we've known that for a long time. The, uh... The vessel site went down. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah. Really? I think I saw that on the Reddit. Yeah. Today. Hundred fucking bucks, dude. Hundred bucks. You should be mad that you don't get that back. I'm not mad that I don't get it back. You know what I'm mad about? I'm mad that nobody cares. Because it's a hundred they took a hundred bucks from hey, a lot of people. I care. I'm glad you care, I Barbara. Care. But every time we do a crowdfunding campaign, it's like we just get fucking hammered on everything we do. It's we we make our stuff. 
You know, yeah. we make the thing. You know, deliver and, it, the thing. and we deliver on the perks. Yeah, yeah. and we, we get the thing and we do the thing. And it's like there's most crowdfunding campaigns, they don't do the thing. Much less the perks or any of that other stuff. Yeah, they're just yeah. like, oh, that didn't eh, work. gave it a shot. Eh, you know, yeah. and people are like, ah, oh, that's silly. And it's like for us, it's like, you guys are the worst. This has been a 15 year ruse to like <laughs> get money from us. All, the, all that that product was was just a really good trailer. Yeah, that's what most crowdfunding is. Yeah, it's like you make a good video with just filled with fiction and then just, no, oh, it didn't work. Yeah, we've uh, delivered on all the crowdfunding stuff that we've done, which uh-huh. is like the movie, the board game. And million dollars. The card game, the, the card, card game, and then Ruby, Ruby is yeah. the combat ready. Yep. Three for three. Three for three. King champions. I thought you said kink champions. I was gonna say kings. No, no, no champions. <laughs> keep it. Just keep it. We're the king so, champs. Can you get that money back? I don't care. Uh, yeah, but if you I mean, listen, I, I'm actually not mad about that. The that aspect of it, crowdfunding. It's when you go into it, you're trying to make something happen. If it happens, great. If it doesn't, that's kind of I was I the assumed risk. I knew that might be happen. some sort of insurance. Well, no. now you can oh. sue. Before back then you couldn't sue. And also Vessel, not crowdfunding. That was just pre-orders. That's it, even worse. Let's, yeah. Let's that's start like, a new branch of the company that's crowdfunding insurance. <laughs> we'll insure your crowdfund contribution. No fucking way. And then when we don't per- pay out for a percentage of your <laughs> your your contribution mo- Level and then Why? we don't the pay out. Just like run to the hills and you're on the hook. Yeah, we'll just be like, oh, yeah. just didn't work. The insurance thing. But then we don't pay out. out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do the same thing that crowdfunding does. Hmm. I find that really annoying because it wasn't crowdfunding. It kind of was, but no, it looked like it. But then, then what did you get? What did you? What was that? Was that a pre-order that didn't get fulfilled? Because you can probably get that back. Well, the company's out of business now. What am I gonna do? Do they not have? Can't you? I mean, you paid a hundred dollars for a product you never received. Yeah, and they also said. Oh, halfway through, they were like, oh, this cup, this vessel cup is taking forever. It's his gift, by the way. I mean, as far as I'm concerned. You I still spent a hundred dollars on something that you didn't receive. Well, we got content out of it. But I don't really care because I wasn't getting the cup. He was getting the cup. So it's like, I gave the gift. <laughs> so <laughs> as far as, far as I'm concerned, <laughs> that's uh, the thought. So I, yeah, bought, I they, bought Gavin a very geez. nice gift of a hundred dollars. That's a nice gift. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. And then they were like, well, we can make that cup, but here's just a cup. Here's a cup <laughs> that keeps track of how much water you drink. It's a cup that counts. You just basically push a button and the counter goes up by one. That's what wow. it was. Wow. Even, yeah. It wasn't even automatic? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I don't think so. And, th- that, our own and those are for sale. They're like 50 bucks and they're on sale on Amazon right now. Where's that money going, Gus? Hmm. Where's that money going? It's a different pocket. Fucking To the fire thing. Festival guy. Probably. <laughs> going to that Scarelli dude yeah. in prison. Mm, we had a... Interesting milestone was crossed today, technology-wise. For the first time ever, a pedestrian was hit and killed by an autonomous vehicle. That sucks. That's a today? Huge, that's a huge sucks. That just that. happened. Shit. Where? Yeah, uh, Tempe, Arizona. It was an Uber autonomous vehicle. They said there was a human safety driver sitting in the driver's seat at the time that it happened. Okay. And the vehicle still hit and killed a pedestrian. So does there that should mean- be footage of this. Right. So is it elderly, I'm assuming, in I, Tempe, there's Arizona? really no details. I wonder if it was just the car was going too fast to stop and they just fell into the road. I don't know. Because at some point, if an autonomous car is going 70 and you jump in front of it, you will get hit by it. Here's all yeah, we got to do, can't stop it. in my opinion. All we have to do is take the number of hours driven by autonomous cars, okay, and divide that into number of pedestrian accidents, then do the same thing for regular cars. If it's higher... That's a problem. If it's way lower, it sucks the person's dead, but that's an improvement. It's a better thing. Like every time an autonomous car has an accident of any kind, they make a big deal out of it, but it's still like. But every time three, a normal human car, right? Human it, operated car has an accident. It's still like 3,000 times less likely to happen. That's, is it because a company is to blame and not a human? It's because there's not a human to blame, yeah. It's or there's a robot. Uh, you can't blame anybody, it's an I'm algorithm. Honestly, mm-hmm. surprised it didn't happen sooner. I'm uh, amazed it's gone on so long, and that was the first I, one. I almost, I almost hit and killed someone a couple days ago, or a couple weeks ago. What they do to ago. you? I was, I was at a light. It was red. Then the protected left green came on. Okay. So I took my left, and then not at the crosswalk, but further back in, in the middle of the street, there was a woman who was crossing the road in between cars that were stopped at that red light. So I take my protected left. I'm going down the street. Then she jumps out. From in between cars that are stopped at a red light God. into my lane. Did you swerve? She's, it was dark and she was wearing all black. I had to Shit slam wish. on my brakes and then, like, she barely got out of the way. I was like, I did nothing wrong there. If I had been distracted, if I had been talking to someone else in my car, if I'd been looking, fucking with the radio, like, that woman would have been under my Prius. There's a, there's a great clip 
Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's a guy in New York, in Manhattan. He's biking super fast. And then a dude, but he's biking the wrong way down the street, but a dude, like, comes out between two cars in the middle of the street. This old dude looks like he's a Wall Street guy. And the fucking biker just plows into him. And they both go flying. And then they, like, recover. And the, the pedestrian goes, dude, you're going the wrong way down the street. He goes, yeah, but you're walking between two cars. And the, he was like, yeah, okay. And they're like, yeah, okay, bye, okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> and then they both, they're both, they both just up. went on their way. You know, it's like, yeah, we both kind of fucked up. Fair play. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I always think when there's an accident, I always think, well, someone was at fault. But yeah, I guess some, sometimes both people are. Yeah. Like two people make an error and there's a collision. Yeah. I would say the guy coming out between the cars, he's probably looking the correct way, not expecting us to look the other yeah. way. That is correct, yeah. yeah. Defensive driving is so important, especially in cities like Austin. I've almost been hit so many times when I'm... Like, if I'm driving in the right lane, and I want to merge into the middle lane, and someone from the left lane also wants to merge into the oh, middle yeah. lane. And, like, I'm looking, I could see that person, like, starting to edge over, so I, like, wait a second, and then I start to merge over, and then they try to merge at the same time as me, mm -hmm. and almost hit me. I've had to swerve out of the way so many times. Do you know who's the responsibility there? It's the person who's further back has to yield. Yeah. And get out of there. They because never do. Someone almost hit me like that two days ago. Yeah, they never do. It happens. <laughs> all I, had I, I was talking about this issue... In the car, I was driving people who were in town, and I was talking about how bad the drivers are here and how people always hit, almost hit me all the time. And as I was telling that story, there was a car that was trying to merge literally into me. I was driving in one lane, and they were just going into me, and I had to honk and, like, swerve out of the <laughs> one way. One of the interesting things moving to the U.S. that I didn't experience in England is usually if you press a button to cross the street in England, that's it. Like, when it goes, there's only going to be people crossing. But in America, that is also when cars turn across that crossing. That's true. In California, so, that's illegal. Some states, it's illegal to do okay. that. Okay. Was it left? They always turn left? You just, or, or you can't enter a crosswalk if there's a person in the crosswalk at any point. Yeah. I, I just remember seeing the walk like come on. I was like, all right, now I'm going to cross. And then cars are turning and they go across at the same time. It's like, so humans and cars go across that at the same time. And yeah. that was very weird to me. So, Such a weird way of well, doing it. What's like New it. York yeah. when you're you walking on the street blocks, the, the, the shorter blocks? And after a while, people just like, after they do like five or six crossings, they kind of just don't give a shit and they just like walk and like they'll weave between two cars in traffic mm -hmm. that's fully moving. It's pretty nice. I've been in cabs in New York City before where I'm, I think they're trying to hit the pedestrian. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> probably points or they're something. just plowing Bragging through. Bragging rights. Someone got mad at me. I had to drive a little bit when I was in New Zealand and there was a similar situation where there was someone in a crosswalk, but it was clear for me to go. So I went, and the pedestrian like stopped and turned around and looked at me. I was like, "Oh, right, right. Yeah, we're, we're, not, we're not in the U.S. here. Yeah. It's, it's different here. Yeah, it's yeah. as jarring as like driving the wrong way down the road. It's like, right. what are you it, doing? Yeah, it was totally safe. Yeah. I saw the like in the, from a U.S. mindset. Like I saw the pedestrian. They were clear over there. I was going over here. It was fine. But I guess they're but just you not. Still have to wait. Yeah, they're not used to that. And I was I, I wasn't used to yeah. to that either. So that was that was my bad. <laughs> All right. So we we have that roundabout now that's right by Fifty First Street. Oh God, oh, God. dude. I was coming west to east. Right. Okay? So I was going to cross from like airport. Over there to here. Mm -hmm. yep. Seriously, that fucking roundabout was backed all the way up 51st Street I've seen to, that. to airport. It's because people don't know how to use a roundabout they here. Don't know. The they, worst is I see people do? stop in the roundabout to yeah. try to let other people in. Yeah, I've had people <laughs> I, I've had people stop to let other people in, honk at them, and then get mad at me. Right. It's like, like, you all are fucking you, wrong. If you're in the roundabout, you keep going until you get off the fucking roundabout. You don't stop to let people who are waiting to get in, in. <laughs> I just retweeted. Yeah, the, it looks it nothing is. like that. Oh, that's, 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 that's ours. That's what they say it's going to be. But, is that what it's supposed to look like? But it doesn't like? go all the way around either. It's so weird. It's nothing like that right now. Oh, so... Oh, is, wait, so there is a, there's a lane that goes all the way around it. Are not, they adding that? Not yet, though. There's only one lane open right okay, now. Okay, at, at the moment, it's not a roundabout. It's like one side of a, head, a set of headphones. So It's like the it's outer like lane of that roundabout is open. The lane yeah. that's coming from the top, those two rows of cars are coming from the top down towards it. Uh, that's our way back from work. That's, that's, our, that's like if we're leaving work, that's the way we go. I was leaving work, and I saw a woman going the opposite way in the roundabout, oh on the God. inside lane. Oh, God. And this, oh, she was super old. I was like, oh, lady, you're going to fucking die. Like, she would... Yeah. Like, she, she was going... She was coming at 35 clockwise? and took left. She took a left into the roundabout. And I was like, Oh, my God. <laughs> this is bad. Oh at first, I thought it was like a construction vehicle, because this thing is like, not all the lanes are open. Yeah. She was in one of the non-opened lanes on the inside, <laughs> like, going around. Just, it's, we're not There's ready also for this. so much construction around there too, and you have no idea which way to go 
to go which direction because one lane you could take just takes you completely off onto airport. That's true. I did that once too. And, and I had to do like a all. U-turn somewhere. It's so not it's like, clear at all. Where, where are, are they the, taking the signs it? up? The, the problem this. is that they have some signs, but they didn't take the old signs down. So there's contradicting <laughs> signs. It's like you have to know that sign was there before, but is no longer applicable. Now you have to pay attention to this other sign. It's a fucking mess. It's awful. It's awful. All right. You guys both said it's awful. Well, let's wrap it's this awful. up because I got to go drive to that roundabout now. <laughs> I fucking look forward to that. All right. Thanks let's for watching. Let's talk about the package bombs in the post show. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. It's crazy. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.